Sunday morning. Good morning. Sunday morning. We're for this Sunday morning. You would check too late. Two years after your funeral's paid. Two years after the grave. She'll be a little stronger for all of the dollars she saved. Watching you wake. Watching you cling to your family. Slipping away. Watch her do nothing but pray. Watch her condemn the Republicans. Take them to brunch and then shrug it away. Now watch us be outraged half of a day. Then pick a new hero to face our leaders and think they could beat them. Playing the game they played since Pelosi had real human blood in her veins. They're all one and the same. Sold off stocks and they all maintain. Flash forward and 40 Sunday mornings fade. A quarter million people in its wake, and the cruise ship sailed today. So, motherfucker, don't shine a light at my face. Wait. Good morning. Sunday morning. <laughs> Good morning. Wait. Sunday morning. release sir my head down fourth shot good little sheep sir sit down sweetie the adults are gonna speak first they trust the science and they're terrified of research here to thank our health care heroes they've been feeding to the burnout feet first until suddenly they dip mid shift take a header off a bridge such a shame they were really such a sweet nurse now they'll never get the card and the cold slice of pizza meant to thank them for their teamwork. Now they'll never get the baggie full of checks mix, which would be the one reward they'd see for the moms they had to intubate. And the countless cries of grief since we've been haunted by the specter of the C word. Now all the applause for our healthcare heroes rings a very hollow note because we played it out like Freebird. See, add the ones and zeros and our fragile checks and balances are checks for all the wealthy who have such unholy talents that we think it's patriotic that we all got zero balances and re-elect Pelosi so she'll face our toughest challenges, <laughs> which is analogous to water for a drowning man. Nancy disregards our impoverished with a spiteful and dismissive little waving of her withered hand, because half a million freezing on the streets is Biden's winter plan. <laughs> And I bet you swore they told you you were voting for a different man. But really all you wanted was a different man. It didn't make a fucking difference if he finishes the previous inhabitant's agenda and starts auctioning protective land. Biden's born to leap at any war a donor's check demands. Turns out that you can't cure greed once it infects a man. Once they lose respect for human life and focus all their fucking efforts on the oil bear and rescue plan. Honey, what are we to Hecuba or Hecuba to us that if she's starving, we should give a damn. Why should we be moved to tears if someone isn't eating? We won't even recognize that food is essential to our being. It's just us and motherfucking Israel who will not guarantee that food's a basic human right. Because starvation is our favorite tool of genocide disguised as sanctioned democratic healing. That's me in the corner, 
losing my religion, gouging out my eyes, and then dancing on the ceiling. Jesus fucking Christ, what a feeling. Hey, what about you, eyeballs? What did you see? In rusty cages dragged behind a chariot Led by Mr. Racial Jungle, Joseph R. Iscariot Fighting over scraps as they barrage us all with variants And buzzfeed clickbait straight until we're paralyzed Trying to distract us from the concentration camps That Joe had swore he'd close but only chose to amplify Where they got fifty-something kids in cages made for five to occupy And no, she hasn't seen the camps but Harris swears they're paradise she tells us the facilities are safe And that right down to the women They are regularly sterilized Then she throws her head back And she proceeds to laugh That sort of heartless cackle you'd expect From someone working steadfastly On behalf of the virus And a congress full of parasites And where was I? I was busy cashing every blue check Demonstrating plainly all the narratives Expected from the verified I was busy breeding verbal leeches by the terabyte Train them to exsanguinate the wealthy while they sleep at night Bleed the oil barons dry and barren Say they showed us how to share and now we share alike Tell them I contracted rabies from a feral mic Now I'm just another species losing sleep to noise pollution and these glaring lights Forced to change its habits and adapt to just survive now it's safe to say that some of us are thriving in the moment Throwing shit on presidential homes beneath the Paris skies So if you feel like you're just powerless, I guess you bought the lie But I can tell they're petrified of our collective might Cause I can hear those gentrifiers weeping at the sight of our collective rights and I only can imagine the intensifying fear of knowing revolution's near And all that's left to do is simply wallow in the thick anticipation of a rabbit bite And baby, one day you can ask your leaders just what that was like before you grab a slice <laughs> So if you think you're powerless, allow me now to change your mind Honey, if you think you're powerless, allow me now to change your mind See them pay you hourly, tax them each apart And build a shining tower out of loopholes and cards And tell you that you're powerless to keep you in the dark Because you aren't, because we aren't You see them pay you hourly, tax them each apart And make you build a shining tower out of loopholes and cards Where they'll tell you that you're powerless to keep you in the dark Because you aren't, because we aren't Independent left dot news. Indie. Indie. What's up, Indie? Indie News Network. Indie. I get news 
from Independent Left. Independent Left dot News. Independent Left dot News. Indie Left Media. Independent Left News. Indie Left. Independent Left News. Independent Left Media. Indie Media. Indie Left. Indie. 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 Indie Left News. Indie Left. Hi, Indie. Indie Left News. Subscribe to Indie News Network. We're world building. Your your way of assisting, I feel like, is really cool. Independent Left News. Independent Left News. I'm a huge fan. He created INN. The founder of uh, Independent News Network. Indie is the founder of Indie News Network. Thank you, Independent Left News. A huge thank you and shout out to Indie Left. Everyone, check out Indie Left News. Hey, Indie Left. Independent Left News. Indie. Indie. Hi, Indie. Indie Left. Indie Left News. Indie News. Independent Media. Independent Left News has done an amazing job. Hey, All right, I just leveled out and blew up Reef's ears. I love doing that. Uh, yes, yeah, you did. I knew I did. It is Sunday night. It is How Do We Miss That? It is the first time in a couple weeks that we're going live for How Do We Miss That? And damn if I miss doing this. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm going to give everybody a couple minutes to get in, but uh, holy shit, did you guys check out the INN anniversary day of content? I mean, I didn't really get a chance to hype it. Um, I know that we didn't promote it nearly as much as I wanted to, but we had 16 scheduled streams throughout a 24-hour period. Um, most of them were pre-recorded, mm. but damn, man, a ton of work, a ton of time put in. Um, we're so proud of every everything that we had put out and how it all came together had so much more things that we could have done to make an entire other day of content. But I think I was a little burned out on making it. I think everyone was a little burned out on watching it, but I think it made some evergreen content. Yeti did an awesome stream about sustainability. I think everybody needs to check that one out for sure. And we had some, some rewind stuff and then we did our round table and, and we all cried a little bit. and We had some fun with the round table. We did. You guys did a special line at new, so it was it was really cool. Um, CBC voter, yeah. it was amazing. Thank you, appreciate that. Uh, Anthony Malecki's in the chat, fam. What's up, dude? Thank you so much, man. Really, I love you, man. You, 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 yeah. Speaking of special line and news, Colin Tuesday at eight o'clock is going to be doing a um like fundraiser thing for uh his his teaching gig right um, yes for giving tuesday i don't know the details i know he put a yes uh he put a tweet out if people want to find that on from uh inns at get indie news yes you guys want to find that um yeah that's in the doobly but, too. yeah he's asking for some donations there so make sure to tune in tuesday give your support you know um yeah. Yeah, so always appreciated. It's always appreciated. So yeah, we did we did a clip show a couple of weeks ago and put together a whole Ukraine theme, all the different clips that we had done all throughout the year about Ukraine and the war there, and the special military operation, quote unquote. Okay, let's do that for YouTube. Um, yep. And then, uh, by the way, so Anthony Malecki, the reason why I, oh, I got all choked up, Anthony actually upped his Patreon this this week uh, from uh, to another level and. Deeply appreciate that, man. I love you. Love you, really. So, your your support's really important to all of us, and you know, you're you're a big fan and big fam, and and uh, and we all appreciate it, really. Um, and it just goes right back into supporting great content creators, which you know. Um, anyway. Yeah. Welcome everybody to How Do We Miss That? So it's Sunday night. It's How Do We Miss That? It is a show and podcast streaming live on Rockfin, YouTube, Twitch, Rumble, Facebook, Twitter, Odyssey, Telegram. Sunday nights at 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, available on all your favorite podcast platforms as well, and Substack. Don't forget, um, that's that's at IndieMedia.today. That's co-hosted by me. I'm Indy, founder and editor of Indie Left News, Indie Media Today, dot today, and Reef Freeland, this guy sitting next to me. He's the INN technical director, host of Reefer After Dark When It Runs, and more more you know regularly INN News, uh, which is up to, I think, 35 or 36 yeah. episodes so far. <clears throat> Uh, we're both co-founding members. So. You, what? Sorry, I said I think so. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he he co-hosts that with Colin. We're all co-founding members of 
Indie News Network, which is a collaborative family of independent content creators. Shout out to Indie News Network. You can follow them at IndieNews.network. All the stories that we're going to do tonight were included in independentleft.news between Sunday and Friday. That's the website that we run, and that's automatically updated at noon every day. It's impossible to keep up with this fire hose of developing news all week long, and these are just five pretty big stories out of the hundreds. And please make sure to like this, like the stream, share this link, subscribe to our channel on all the platforms that you watch and listen. We're pretty much everywhere. And uh, again, we, we we're gonna we'll thank all the volunteers and everything at the end. We've got credits and thank you so much to everyone that that contributes and Patreon. And again, we're we're available everywhere. So I want to get the stories because we've got some of them that are pretty interesting. And first one, uh, let's let's look at some thumbnail. Okay, so on the thumbnail. We're going to cover that Ukraine goes dark. That's going to be later. Pilots and Amazon workers. Yeah. We're going to talk about what's happening there. And then we're going to talk about Orf and Matt Taibbi and the article they wrote about censorship and what YouTube has been doing to them. And I may even actually have to go in a restream and turn off YouTube for a portion of that. So we may have to kick over to Rockfin and Rumble to show some of the video if you want to see the full Orf thing. Uh, I'm just worried that they're going to take us down. But um, otherwise, I mean, I think we'll be okay if we're, you know, uh, like we probably don't need to show the whole thing. We'll see. So first story is about the pilots, though. And uh, I'm worried about the pilots. I think we all should be worried about the pilots. They're, you know, they're workers just like everybody else. They're blue collar. They may make better, slightly better salaries. They do impossible work uh, really hard. And we're going to learn about a little bit more about what they're up to right now. So. This came out of Labor Notes, Jonah Furman, last week. And uh, the pilots are speaking out on contract flights. I get to have a life, too. Like, so I'm reading through this. I'm like, you know, mm-hmm. don't, nobody's talking about airline, airline pilots? Wait. Airline pilots, too? Seriously? Like, is there anyone that's immune? Is there anyone that's not being squeezed? Like, so... I thought it was important to to talk about some pilots and and read this story really quickly. That's the uh, I just put the link for Rockfin in the chat. Rockfin's an ad free platform. Go over there, sign up, subscribe for free. Uh, shout out to INN that just hit its two thousandth follower for free on the platform. Uh, there is a premium subscription available that's going to be going up in price soon. But uh, either way, there all of our content's available basically for free, um, and you'll be able to see all the clips from this. By the end of the week, you'll see all of them free. I make a couple of them premium for throughout the week, and as we release them, they become free there too. Anyway, pilots, holy moly, pilots. Airline labor's at a breaking point. Country's four largest airlines, four largest airlines facing labor pilot conflict, all centering on mismanaged pandemic recovery. Yay! So, the pilots are split among three unions, and they share grievances over grueling scheduling. You know, this sounds very similar to the rail workers, right? And also to the Nabisco workers. Yep. So they say overworkers depleted their home lives while inflation eats into their paycheck. Well, of course, because they're they're not being raised to keep up with right now the rising cost of inflation. Here, Delta pilots voted by 99% to authorize a strike with 96% turnout. They're all they all want they, they all want to fight. United Pilots, 94% to reject a tentative agreement, and the American Pilots Union leadership voted not to even send their deal out for a vote. Southwest Pilots filed for mediation in September, signaling the contract negotiations are are not going to go smoothly either, right? So, uh, any potential strikes are still a long way off. Airline unions are, interesting, covered under the Railway Labor Act, and negotiations are subject to extensive federal oversight before any legal strike or lockout can take place. I think we can thank the Reagan administration for that. I seem to recall in the early 80s, there was a pretty heavy pilot uh, airline pilot strike, and the government came in and broke that strike and forced the pilots to go back to work, if I remember correctly. But I don't, I, I, I'm not going to speak to the details. I need to research it. I'll be the first one to admit I don't know the details of that story. That's just what I remember as being a little kid. Mm. Right. So, like the rail negotiations, pilots' negotiations have stretched on for years without raises. But pilots and rail workers alike, the primary issue isn't money, it's time. 
And again, we've talked about this on the rail worker stuff. It's how much time they're getting. So again, not money, but time. So the airline industry has gone through incredible turbulence over the past three years. Not surprising when the pandemic hit, demand collapsed, and they obviously the flights went down 75% by May 2020. And what did they do? They furloughed or they laid off everybody. But air traffic rebounded just as fast, shooting up 80% from February to July of last year. All right, over the course of pandemic, federal government spent more than $50 billion on stabilizing the industry. They pumped money into this thing. And that money was meant to maintain capacity for when the market bounced back. Makes sense, right? Instead, they did the opposite. They offered buyouts, encouraging thousands of pilots to take early retirement deals. And now that short-sighted decision has left them scrambling to keep up with demand. Yeah, they told all these pilots, take retirement packages so they could cut their books and show massive profits when demand was lower. And instead of using that to maintain the levels that they were already sustaining during pandemic or prior to pandemic, they instead reallocated that money and turned it into profit, which thanks federal government for that. And here's yep. the result. More work for fewer pilots, more fatigue, and less time at home. We had on some days a tenfold increase on pilot fatigue calls. All right, this is not a canary in the coal mine. It's a lion roaring in a cage. I mean, you don't really hear that description too often from a pilot or like from a worker inside, but fatigue calls are based on a pilot's own judgment. Federal Aviation Administration. Administration regulations govern how long a pilot can be scheduled to work in a day, depending on such factors as start time, number of co-pilots. The pilots say what's legal under FAA rules and company policies is not necessarily what's safe or smart. That's haunting in itself, that pilots are not determining exactly what's yeah. safe or smart. That's Can we start right there now? And then he says, I have to make that call. Hey, you're legal. You can have a 13 or 14 hour day, but are you good to land in LaGuardia at midnight in a driving rainstorm? The more pressure that's put on you, it's pressure on the margin of safety. I mean, so tours of duty, which are known as work blocks. And here, this is also gets into, remember how they had that, that just in time scheduling for the rails also getting longer. Yeah. So now where pilots used to be assigned to leave home for one or two days at a time, now work blocks tend to be four or five days long. How do you sustain a marriage? How do you like know your children at all with four or five days out? And here's the other problem. And I'm going to read that here. This also ups the stakes of calling in sick, because if you call out at the beginning of a work block, you're on the hook for four to five days of sick time which is sometimes more than half a pilot's yeah. annual allowance. I mean, for missing one hop because they decided to stretch the, the length of your hops. So in response, yep. the unions are calling for more transparency and predictability in scheduling. Right? So typically a pilot who's on reserve gets about 12 hours notice that they're on the short list to get called up. This is unbelievable. Like I could not believe I'm reading even this whole sentence. This is how they fuck these pilots in the first few, for the first few months or first few years that, that they're putting in their, their time and paying their dues to gain their seniority. Right? So 12 hours notice that they're on a short list to get called up. If they're on reserve, this isn't even if they're actually scheduled for a flight. It's yeah. going to give them time to commute to call. their, Right. They're on call. It gives them time to commute to their base airport, which is also often via a commuter plane because they can't even afford to live near a base airport because they get paid so shitty. They don't say yeah. that, but that's the that's the other rub. That's that's of course flight yeah. attendants as well as pilots, where they then wait in a hotel room for a few hours to get the call about when their tour will begin, if their tour will begin, because again, they're on call. If someone higher in the queue calls in sick or picks up a different shift, they could get in called they could call in sooner. And if there are delays, they could be held back longer. But in pre-pandemic times, this reserve system applied to mainly the lower seniority pilots who didn't yet have a fixed schedule, which is about 
15 to 20 percent of the workforce, which according to United Pilots, I mean, it's just a guesstimation. That's no official released statistic. But during 2020, 2021, 2022, even early, okay, percentage of pilots on reserve year, 50 percent. They had veterans got a taste of how broken and disruptive the reserve scheduling system has become. They had guys that had been, and, and women that had been pilots for 20, 30 years, sitting on reserve in a hotel room, waiting for a flight to either show up or to be assigned. Or I mean, just for, uh, maybe. Okay, so again, the workforce reductions followed by Rapid new hirings have also changed how the unions approach negotiations. And now they have about 6,000 pilots who weren't there last time they went through negotiations. So this is a six-year Delta pilot. We've had generational shift, and the folks that are being hired now have a different idea and perspective. They expect the company will give us better yeah. benefits when it comes to work-life balance, right? Why does this like even have to be said that we have a younger generation and they're like, I get to have a life. I'm not going to be my dad. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. I mean, my father who works 30 days on 30 days off, like he definitely gets notice, you know, like, yeah, that's craziness. There's a schedule. Yeah, you can have full a week stint. Consistent. Yeah, like, yeah. Yep. All right, so let's look at the chat. Hey, Rick Solis, welcome. So C.S. Moria, uh, Air Traffic Controllers Union, Reagan fired them and then hired scabs. I, oh, okay, okay. Yep, in case they don't hire scab, they, they can't, in this case, they can't just hire scab pilots, I don't think. I don't know how you hire scab air traffic controllers either, but I guess there are local ones. And, but... There's, you have to have a certain amount of time on certain planes, and most of them are ex-military because and licensing and it's yeah. so expensive yep. to get the the hours in that kind Training. of a jet to be able to even go yeah. work for one of these airlines. Uh, I've I've done a little bit of homework about some of this stuff in the past. Yeah, um, me as but, well. I, you know, again, I wanted to shout out the pilots. Um, I, I got to fly earlier this month and we had a smooth flight and um so these guys don't get nearly the love that that they deserve and they are <clears throat> well a slightly higher pay than the average blue collar worker they still are blue collar workers that are at the behest of management and that are working early on just for you know they're not making big money and they're working shitty shifts to be able to pay their dues to be able to get there at some point so, so shout out to, to all the pilots out there. Thank you. And we appreciate what you're doing. And we know that you're a worker. It's just like everybody else. Um, all right. So I got, I got another story here and you saw, and it was a good one about Amazon. Uh, it, it's a good one, but it's got a little bit of a weird twist to it. And. Man, As they tend to. And. Well, the the next one's pretty even even better, but but this one, this guy, I, right. Common Dreams Indie Media Award winner. By the way, go to indiemediaawards dot com if you haven't gone there yet. Check out all the Indie Media Award honorees. There are thirty nine of them: outlets, streamers, and writers, the best of the best, the people who are featured the most in independent left news, and the people that that we love and and really support and endorse. So. Cease and desist order called for massive called a massive victory for Amazon workers. And it is, and who calls it a massive victory? The lawyer for ALU. So okay. Um <clears throat> Kenny Stancil writes this article. And there's Chris. This was over on Labor Day weekend when they were doing the protest over at Jeff Bezos' house. So here's here's his article. Progressives in the United States welcome news that Federal judge on Friday, and this was last uh, just this week, uh, last week, filed a nationwide cease and desist order against Amazon, which stipulates that the e-commerce giant must stop firing workers for organizing and otherwise impeding their participation in pro-union activities. Now, what are the ramifications, consequences? What are they going to do? I have no idea. But 
The court order filed in Eastern District of New York by District Judge Diana Guahart. Waharati, I, I, I knew I was going to butcher that name. I should have. That's close. I think you're good. All right. So it instructs Amazon, which of course is the country's second largest employer, to immediately stop, quote, discharging employees because they engaged in protected concerted activity and, quote, in like, in any like or related manner, interfering with, restraining, or coercing employees in the exercise of the rights guaranteed to them by Section 7 of the National Labor Relations Act, end quote. Okay, cool, right? And then Vice does this whole long report, and they, the thing is, is that they talk about Gerald Bryson, and he's the one that, that this is filed on behalf of because he was fired for protesting black safety protocols. So, of course, we know about JFK 8 and Chris Smalls. At the time, NLRB found yep. Amazon illegally retaliated against him by terminating him and demanded that it reinstate him the judge's order denied his request to get his job back because it claimed it wouldn't have significant effect on workers' willingness to organize. That blows my mind. I what? So Ana Lilia Mejia and Demario Cooper, who are co-executive directors for the Center for Popular Democracy Action applauded the court's decision to provide injunctive relief that protects the Amazon workers across the U.S. from being terminated for engaging in legally protected workplace organizing because while lamenting that ruling falls one step short because it fails to reinstate Bryson. So what they're saying is, is that this decision is a massive victory for Amazon workers nationwide, the ones at least who are there now. Protection from retaliation is especially important as the workers enter the grueling peak season in Amazon's warehouses, which we know of. Okay, but he and Cooper said uh, that nonetheless, continuing to keep Gerald Bryson out of work at this point is just a travesty of justice. It's just mean and cruel. He actually wants to go back and work at JFK 8. Man, what does that tell you about Gerald mm. Bryson, about working at JFK 8, about the people in that union? I mean, it's... Uh, it it really is a travesty. So, in addition to mandating that Amazon cease and desist, it probably shows there's no other work. Well, yes, sure, at that price, especially you know at that rate. But in addition to mandating that Amazon cease and desist, okay, from retaliatory dismissals of workplace organizers, other suppressive tactics that violate federal labor law, the court also requires the immensely profitable corporation to publicly inform all of its JFK employees of their rights. I'm sure really they're going to be, they're going to do that on the up and up, right? So again, Center mm -hmm. for Popular Democracy looks forward to the posting and public reading of the judge's order so that JFK 8 workers will be notified of their federal rights and of their un employer's unlawful actions. Sure. Now, Reef actually has a little bit of a story on this. Amazon continues to aggressively suppress worker organizing across the country. But now the NLRB has the added enforcement power of a federal court's cease and desist order. We will continue to fight for justice for Gerald and other Amazon workers nationwide, and we urge the NLRB to continue pushing courts to grant injunctive relief against the fired Amazon employees. Hell yeah. Justice for my boy Matt Luttrell, too. All right. Mm. ALU lawyer, here we go, Seth Goldstein, he talked to Vice that the ruling is of huge significance. That it is a national cease and desist order, which means that wherever in the country they violate it, theoretically, the NLRB can immediately seek a contempt of court order. The federal judge is not happy when a, when a party violates their rule. There can be sanctions of all types. Well, that's pretty interesting. I'm not crazy mm -hmm. necessarily about Seth Goldstein or ALU. Seth Goldstein is also a DNC affiliated, if I remember correctly. Again, I, don't I, just, I, I know there's going to be, I know there's going to be something. Like, they don't grant these powers without handcuffing you somewhere else, you know? Okay, Yep X so... is saying that volume on mobile is maxed and it's hard to hear us, which is really interesting. All right, well, I'm going to move the mic a little closer and hopefully that helps. 
Um, okay, so yeah. the court um, order comes just weeks a- after Amazon suspended dozens of JFK 8 workers who refused to return to the shop floor. Of course, we, we covered that for a few hours due to health and safety concerns following a fire at New York City Fulfillment Center. Either we covered it or you guys covered it on, on INN News. One of us definitely covered the fire. Seth Goldstein mm-hmm. called yeah. Amazon's punitive response to last month's temporary work stoppage a violation of workers' rights to join in a collective action about the terms and conditions of their employment. And he's not wrong. Sat Island, Island facility has earned a reputation for egregious violations of workers' rights since it opened in September 2018. This I don't think people talk about much. Again, this is pre-pandemic stuff. Data published earlier this year, for instance, shows that the fulfillment center's already above average injury rate increased by 15% during pandemic from 2020 to 2021, which is where when Chris was screaming about this. And when Matt, you know, earlier this year has been yelling, but Amazon earlier spent big on union busting consultants and pulled out all the stops in a failed bid to crush the organizing drive at JFK 8. However, it worked at Albany, and they're going to say that. Just days after the early October fire at JFK 8, Amazon did successfully defeat a unionization effort at ALB 1. ALU has filed objections to the result, accusing Amazon again of coercive, threatening, and retaliatory conduct. And we know what they were doing to Heather. Uh, We know that they were having, you know, illegal meetings with employees. We know that they were bullying people and chasing them into the parking lot. They were insisting that people vote no. Um, I'm not saying that all that is not happening. It's it's not good. And it was a two-to-one loss, as I'm sure you remember we covered. But regarding the nationwide cease and desist order, Goldstein said that it is broad and it is sweeping and that no one has gotten that yet against Amazon. So that's a good thing. Um, I don't know how much they're going to be able to enforce it or what they're going to be able to do. I don't see any penalties, any punitive measures. What will this cost them? Will Amazon continue to fire these people? My guess would be until it really costs them substantially, they're going to. And, And it makes me angry and sad. And it's why I continue to cover this and amplify it and call this out whenever I see it. Hmm. Um, and there's more with Amazon, of course, because this was we had a we had a holiday this week. Um, yep. We had Thanksgiving, and we the day after Thanksgiving is one of the biggest days for Amazon in the U.S. and globally, but specifically in the U.S. but worldwide. What we saw was a global workers' protest that actually bled into the U.S., thankfully. <clears throat> there was mm. some solidarity. But I'm going to continue with another common dream story, which also a- appeared in Sheer Post. On Black Friday, Amazon workers in 40-plus countries strike and protest despicable treatment. I love it. This is great. So... What happened here? Here's garment workers in Bangladesh taking part in a Make Amazon Pay demonstration on Friday. So, more than 30 countries participated. Thousands of Amazon workers in more than 40 countries are planning to mark Black Friday by walking off the job and protesting the corporate behemoth's use of employees in the climate, as well as its chronic avoidance of taxes while raking in huge profits. Hell yeah, Jake Johnson. Love that uh, sentence. Make Amazon Pay, which, by the way, is a website, makeamazonpay.com or .org. We're going to go to it, and I'm going to put in a tweet from there later. Actions are expected to include Mm. marches and rallies, reunion recognition in Bangladesh, strikes at nearly 20 warehouses in France and Germany, walkouts in a dozen cities in the U.S., and a protest by newly organized workers, unionized workers in Japan. We have to make Amazon pay all its workers a decent wage in a dignified in dignified workplaces for its environmental damage. Today, unions, civil society, 
and progressive elected officials will stand shoulder to shoulder in a massive global day of action to denounce, Amazon, to denounce Amazon's despicable multi-million dollar campaigns to kill worker-led union efforts. And that's the president of UNI Global Union, Christy Hoffman. So it's time for the tech giant, quote, to cease their awful unsafe practices immediately, respect the law, and negotiate with the workers who want to make their jobs better. That is talking about the uh, unwillingness to recognize the ALU specifically. As they're about to say, that Amazon spends around $4.3 million, million dollars, literally like Jeff Bezos with the finger and Dr. Evil. On anti-union consultants in the U.S. last year as it worked to crush historic organizing efforts in Alabama, of course at RWD, uh, at RDU1, and New York at JFK8, and at... Um, uh, the other one in in five, number five. Oh God, I'm the one where Tristan Lyon worked. I, I'm losing my mind. Uh, L L D J five. Uh, I mean, it. it's LDJ5. losing. So workers ultimately voted earlier this um, year to unionize and set out of the warehouse, the first ever, like we'd said, organized union in the U.S. It was L D J five. It's the other warehouse in Staten Island. I just brain farted for a second. <clears throat> meanwhile, um, meanwhile. I love it when they put that in. Amazon avoided $5 billion in federal corporate income taxes in the U.S. last year, according to the Institute on Taxation, on Taxation and Economic Policy, as the company continued to shortchange and exploit its employees who were frequently injured on the job as they raced to meet the company's punishing productivity measures. Again, we've talked about a lot of that, too. So, across the globe, the workers who make Amazon's fast Logistics Network and numerous businesses possible say they're often subjected to inhumane treatment and forced to labor ungru uh, under grueling uh, conditions to, eager to earn a meager paycheck as company executives grow richer each year. And some of them aren't even meager. They are meager in comparison to CEO Andy Jassy, who received $213 million in total compensation in 2021. That is beyond an obscene amount. And there are people that say that he earned that because the company earned X billion and he's in the, what, and that's what his pay plan says. And a lot of that is in bonuses and stock. And it turns out that a lot of the stock is, has gone down in value and it's not nearly what that is. And some of it's in options that he then has to spend his own money to buy and cash out of. And a lot of it he may not even buy at the time that it's, but stupid. Garment workers like those I represent Toil to swell Amazon's coffers, often without any recognition that we're Amazon workers, said Nazma Akter, president of the Somalito Garment Sramic Federation in Bangladesh. Amazon is the third largest direct employer in the world. But when you take us into the supply chain into account, it's actually even bigger, uh, even larger. And at work, they can face sexual harassment from management victimization when they try to organize in the trade union against that violence and for better pay and conditions. Wow, that almost sounds like what happens here in a lot of cases. Again, that's in Bangladesh. They're on the front line of climate breakdown. And we we covered some of that too. Yep. <clears throat> so they know climate justice and social justice cannot be separated. We need to have to make Amazon pay, hashtag make Amazon pay, all its workers a decent wage in dignified workplaces and for its environmental damage. Yeah. They disclosed earlier this year that it emitted the equivalent of 71.54 million metric tons of carbon dioxide in 2021, which is likely a significant undercount given how they calculate their footprint and that they want to actually make themselves look better. <clears throat> I didn't. The, Jake didn't write that. I just added that extra line. So, Progressive International's Make Amazon Pay coordinator, and this is who's coordinating this globally, is Progressive International and a huge host of groups. And you'll uh, we'll go over that in a minute. So we all know that the price of everything is going up, as is the temperature of our planet. Okay, Instead of paying its workers fairly, its taxes in full, and for its damage to our environment, Amazon is squeezing every last drop of time it can from workers, communities, the planet. Sure. And so is the U.S. military. Amazon is, 
and the U.S. military. Let's not forget that. And so this guy wrote an op-ed for in Jacobin, or they did, that as cost of living soar worldwide, that their hardline stances against improving workplace conditions and recognizing unions remain unchanged. So they're doing the same thing everywhere else that they're doing to Chris Smalls and to ALU <clears throat> and to the guys at RWDSU and to the uh, Teamsters that are trying to organize and to Amazon Cause. Shout out to Amazon Cause down in North Carolina. Love those those, those folks. They're doing amazing work. In the UK, it offered workers a ridiculous 35 pence raise per hour in August. In other words, a massive real-term pay cut. That's, that's yeah. 35 pence? Well, that's like a 30, massive real-term pay cut? Well, it's 35 cents an hour. Well, because if you're you're not giving them a raise, yeah. they're actually, because of cost of living, they're getting paid, you know, that, that dollar is coming out plus taxes. In France and Germany, workers also rejected having yeah, their but pay that's, cut. Well, I feel like that barely covers inflation. It like, doesn't even. That's the point. It, it actually puts anyway, them worse off. Yeah. I'm giving you a raise, and I'm putting you worse off yeah. than you were before. Yeah. Because aren't I the benevolent king for giving you a raise? Which, after taxes, <laughs> the, <laughs> right. the 35 pence turns into 16 pence. All right. And, yes, yeah, just... It's, yeah. So, in France and Germany, workers also yeah. rejected having their pay cut in real terms. Amazon made $33.3 billion in profit in 2021, but it won't pay its workers a fair share. And you can't just say Bezos anymore. Bezos is one of the largest shareholders. He's a founder. He's on the executive, executive board of the chairmanship. But he is not running the day-to-day -day operations anymore. This guy, Andy Jassy, is. He's really the, the guy we should be screaming at, the guy whose doorstep we should be laying on every day. Yeah, it's going to line Bezos' pockets, but Andy Jassy is now the one in control of the ship. So to make Amazon pay, we can clearly not rely on goodwill. Instead, Amazon workers and their trade unions, environmentalists, tax watchdogs, and regulators need to get together and fight back. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. Quote, that's why mm -hmm. workers and organizers are uniting on November 25th in a campaign to make Amazon pay. In the U.S., the Bangladesh, Germany, South Africa, Amazon will face coordinated strikes and protests demanding that Amazon raises wages above inflation for all its workers, stops its union busting, decarbonizes its whole supply chain, and pays its fair share of taxes everywhere. So there was this Laura girl who tweeted about Make Amazon Pay. My guess is that she's working with the organization. And I did go to this make as make Amazon pay dot com to see like who's involved and it's a pretty impressive right. list of people. Um and it didn't just happen in the US it, it, worldwide, but it said that in dozens of facilities world in the US, including at STL eight, there were workers who walked off the job and even I thought this guy hated labor and didn't really like workers. Jimmy Dore? Wait, Jimmy Dore? Jimmy Dore mm -hmm. retweeted that? Get out. Wait, mm. I thought he's a right winger. He doesn't mm. like workers. Come on. Mm. All right. Mm. Mm. Shout out, Fuck Jimmy. Fuck you. Thanks. Oh, well, oh, I, I, I teased the, the next story. Damn it. All right. Um, Did you? A little bit. Uh, but I'm going to go back to a two shot. We'll, it, we'll escape out of this, and I did want to go to that um, makeamazonpay.com and show you guys who's involved. Hmm. All right, let's go back here. All right, we're going to make Amazon pay. So what's going on here? Again, this is run by Progressive International. And right away, I you know it's available in a lot of languages, which is great. Okay, they've got the sign up form. All the countries where they're gonna where they're organizing. There's a toolkit to organize your own, and then you've got here's the coalition: Progressive International, UNI Global Co Global Union, Amazon Workers International, 350, and then here we go. They literally had to put this in 
alphabetical order because there are so many in every country that are participating in this action, which is really cool. This is organizing. Green Greenpeace. And it's across organizations we not we may not always agree with and align with. International Federation of Journalists, I'm guessing that they're also like part of the mainstream media. The ITW uh -huh. the, you know, the ITWF. Some of the big labor unions. But I did not see Amazon labor union involved. Um I did not see the oh, public citizen. We like those guys. That was founded by Ralph Nader. Mm, Sunrise. Sunrise movement. Okay. And I was looking for, I don't see any of the other major unions that we had interviewed or looked at as yeah. involved in organizing Amazon in the US. Um mm. but some of them still had walkouts in their facilities. So I just wanted to be you to be aware of this website, make amazonpay.com. They are actually trying to do things to organize workers worldwide and take action, which I think is pretty damn cool. So um Yes, Jimmy Dore is word violence. Thank you, Eric. Eric T. Red. Jimmy Welcome. Dore. Welcome to the show. We got Care Bear Colin in the house, INN. Go check out his interview with um with Kadal Rani from the anniversary stream. That was great. We got Rick Solis here. I never remembered that name. I've typed it like 50 times. I definitely remembered it. <laughs> Uh huh. Um, Andy you. must do more than four thousand. <laughs> yeah, more than the average worker. You bet. Dot com. Yes, for sure. Dot com. Thank you, Yepex. Yeah. Uh, let Let me put that up on screen. That's that. That's really sweet of you. Saying that. Uh, it, it's all about geometry. I wish you guys had more viewership. You guys still being punished by YouTube. I guess we are. Um, we're also live on Rumble on Rockfin. Nobody's chatting over on Rockfin. I don't know why, but we're there. We're on Odyssey. We're over on Telegram. We're on Twitter and Twitch and Facebook. And we're everywhere. So I don't know if it's that people aren't watching us there. We're also on both INN and on Indie Left YouTube. So we're kind of splitting between those two channels as well. I kind of cannibalize my own in, channel in that if way. If you're in like... Yeah, if if you can get your bunny ears to tune in to like... Southeast Channel Three. I'm. I, I've been piping it into there. You know, you just gotta get get real finicky with that 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 little antenna. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we got thumbnail designer. Hold it. We got thumbnail extraordinaire designer, INN creative director, Big Bad Crab in the house. I was listening to Wall Street. Who are these people? Down. Yeah, who are these people? Thank you, Joe. But I no Indie Left and INN are not the same. That's a great question, Yapex. I'm so glad that you asked, and I'd like to clear that up. No, I am Indie Left. I'm Indie. And Independent Left News uh, is a daily newsletter that I started two and a half years ago. Um, and I also have an Indie Media Today substack. And that's what that does is amplify the entire left uh, from Gray Zone to Jimmy Dore to RBN to everybody. And then uh, last. Aaron Monte, you say? Oh, no, no. I don't want to hear about Aaron Monte. Fuck Aaron Monte. No, Aaron Monte. The host too. be known. Oh, the host be known. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> yeah, we're not we're 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 not we're not featuring TYT or or um T or Humanist Report or any of those guys. But so I started this website two and a half years ago. Saw about a year and change ago that there were a bunch of these up and coming content creators, and I talk about this to Savvy Sabs, but I organized a group into an, a network that's INN, that's Indie News Network, of which I am a member and a participant, and you know, kind of uh, you know, Ray Reef and I run the network together. And we represent uh, and work find with all the links to all the members of the network at indienews.network. Okay, so 
we do what, some original shows happy? for mm -hmm. INN, exclusive to INN. Jesse Jets American Tradition is exclusive to INN. INN News is exclusive to INN. We do network roundtables that sometimes have gone to everybody's channel, but we've done a couple like rando roundtables that just went to INN. Um, so we have our own channels for Indie News Network, and we have our own link tree, IndieNews.network. But Independent Left News is its own entity that showcases everybody's stuff. There's bots that share on Twitter. There's uh, and and that's where I primarily tweet is your from. IndieLeft.media secure or not secure? Uh, it is not secure. Okay, cool. Just type it without. You needed to know if it needed an S or no, not. No, it does not need an S. But yeah, thank you. So ah, uh, Todd, be the change. Another INN member. See. I contacted all these kick-ass content creators like Colin in the chat, like Todd in the chat, be the change, like Reef, who's sitting next to me, like Rob Durden, who I've done shows yep. with, and Chris Legion, who's been on here, and Angel Rivera, and I could go on and on. There's 23 of us. Check us all out at IndieNews.network. Now I'm doing a commercial. Don't put the timer up, Reef, please. I have mm -hmm. more stories, I promise. I won't. Okay. So, yes, I just, uh, to clear up, though, I am Indie with Indie Left News. But there is a separate INN, and our Twitter is at Get Indie News on uh, on Twitter, and that is the conglomerate collective of twenty three people. It could be me, it could be Reef, it could be Colin. But we're trying to basically tweet on behalf of the network, on behalf of everybody, and everybody collectively. By the way, at INN has access to Restream. Everybody has access to Canva to be able to do kick ass thumbnails and artwork. Everybody, and we also have creative directors. So if you need help. We've got guys like Greg, and if you need help with streaming, we got guys like Reef and Audio, and it's 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 awesome. It's a big family. So, Rando Ram Table. Now it is a party. It's it's been a party in the past. Um, so I did want to get back, and we're going to go back to our story here, and we're going to talk about another independent content creator who is featuring independent left news, but not part of INN. Though we love him, and I I I think I may have even invited Orf at one point to join INN, but. Orf is big time. Now, it's really funny that I'm doing this story because I didn't realize until like basically yesterday that Jimmy Dore also not only covered the story, but had Orf on. And I invited Orf to join us and not to call out Orf out. I love Orf and I totally get that why he's busy and whatever. But I, I've been a Patreon supporter and fan and uh, we've DM'd in the past. And I was hoping maybe that if he wanted to come, knowing that I was going to cover stuff, that he would join us. But love you, Orf. Totally get it. Appreciate you no matter what. You do great work. Um, and Crab's done some work with the work. Get your ass too. over here. But come on out and hang out sometime. Anyway. Yeah. Um, you fucker. Does Reef share and mail his spare herb? Reef doesn't have Fuck any spare you. herb. Reef doesn't have any spare herb. Reef no, actually it's, needs it's weed money. So if you can go to Cash App, yeah. dollar sign Reef Breland, <laughs> R E E F Breland, B R E L A N D. You find all that. It's in the doobly doo in the description down below. You can always find that at drsmoke.cloud. Yes, it, it is at Dr. Dr. Smokey. Dr. Smokey. Cloud. Cloud. <laughs> I set up a, yeah. a URL that goes to that his link tree. Fucking weirdo. <laughs> uh, so Orf got censored and Matt Taibbi is angry because it happened for Matt Taibbi's website, TK News. What happened? So mm. we'll start out by Telling you what happened on Thursday. So on Thursday, I think this was election denial for me, but not for thee. YouTube censors TK produced videos again, despite factual accuracy. <laughs> right? He didn't lie. He didn't alter clips, removed key context. He made edits faithful to, to reality. Got a strike for it. Thank you, Nanny State. So in late September, Matt Orfala or Orfale or at at O R F. Okay, or zero RF on Twitter. Go follow him. Go give him a shout out. Go sub to him on Patreon. He's one of my favorites. He's fantastic. Uh, he inspires Joe. I know he inspires Turncoat Don. He's one of those guys that makes these cut videos that just they they punch in the face. And we're gonna watch a couple of them today. So, in late September, videographer Matt Orfalo made a pair of videos for TK. One memory hold: the election was hacked. Simple montage of Democratic politicians, media officials. Enforcement officials saying the 2016 election was, among other things, quote, illegitimate, quote, rigged, quote, hacked, 
and a, quote, cyber 9-11. I have to say, quote, I want to be very careful. YouTube, don't take my channel down. The second one, titled Memory Hold Part 2, the, quote, unquote, rigged election, was a similar exercise with one exception that it compared the post-2020 statements of Donald Trump to post-2016 of Democratic partisans. When Trump tells Chris Wallace, I have to see, I have to see, when asked if he'd concede the election, or if shows Hillary Clinton saying, no, I would not accept. When asked in 2017, after, after her loss, that she'd contest the results. No, I would not. Okay? He, he shows Trump later saying, he'll, of course, respect the results if I win. And Hillary Clinton saying, Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstances. Quote. Essentially exact mm -hmm. analogs, right? And here's a tweet from yep. Orf. Going, you know, that, that YouTube pulled his, his video down. And thank, thanks so much for that, YouTube. Oh, shut the fuck up. Shitlib is in the house. Okay, Joe has entered the chat. What's up, Joe? YouTube initially tried to demonetize both videos, but after a fuss, they reversed the decision about the first one. But now they've taken a more drastic step, not only deleting the second video, but two earlier rough cut versions that were never even shown to the public, but lived on his site, I believe, as drafts. This is another mad feature of the content moderation era. You can be censored and punished for pre-publication thinking just for the fact that they think that you might put that out and make that public. They also gave him a content strike, leaving him just two away from being removed completely from the site, which would effectively put him out of business. And this is pretty much the story that he tells to Jimmy Dore. And Jimmy's focused on the 2020, 2016, and the hypocrisy here. So YouTube's decision claims that the second video contains claims that U.S. the past presidential elections were rigged or stolen, and our election integrity policy prohibits content that advances false claims that widespread fraud, errors, or glitches occurred in U.S. presidential elections. Okay, moreover, quote, countervailing views, which we refer to as EDSA context, on those remarks are not provided in the video, audio, title, or description. That's crazy. So this EDSA thing is where they're saying you have to provide context and say, yes, we know that that for sure that, that Joe Biden is the president, that da, 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 and that the, you, you have to acknowledge that like throughout the whole thing and have like a disclaimer, I guess is what they're saying here. What? Oh, what the F and F? So here's the yep. letter that they sent to Orf. Okay, again, countervailing views, elections misinformation have been removed from this channel. Holy shit. It's crazy. So, we'll go through this outrageous what explanation. the fuck? Thank you, Jimmy Dore. Did, we, did he enter the chat too? No, Jimmy hasn't entered the chat. Jimmy doesn't enter this chat. But I'd love for him to. Uh -oh. You want to? Oh, bitches. Nice stuff. Okay, so there are no statements taken out of context. No editing games were played to make it appear someone's saying something. Here she did not. This was the point of the exercise, to show exactly what was said, when, and by whom. As to their letter, and, and I, you know, um, we fight with them, and I, there have been others, like, I know that um, Convo Couch, they've definitely had this happen to them, too. As to YouTube's letter, if indeed their election integrity policy and uh, prohibits content that advances false claims, that past U.S. presidential elections were rigged or stolen, and YouTube really should be taking <laughs> down the first video as well. And that's what I wanted to show was this first <laughs> video. <laughs> <laughs> Mike McCray, Mike. At, follow at Mike McCray, Mike at Mike Mike McCray, Mike on YouTube. You're not allowed to do that if you get the name wrong. You just gotta give up. Right. <laughs> like halfway through he's be like all right i give up just give up man all right so let's go back here <laughs> we're going to show this video <clears throat> this is the hunter biden video oh wait this is the wrong video sorry yeah wait. what we want to do is show this one the election video first and then we'll get to the hunter biden video afterwards and that's that's where jimmy didn't have time to get to in his segment with work but so if we're all in agreement that it is incorrect to say the 2020 election was stolen. Okay. What about the 2016 election? Look, I'm not gonna go back into history. 
was a stolen election. It was stolen. Stolen. He's an illegitimate president. He's an illegitimate president. You know, pretending to be president. Why do you think the president is going to such great lengths to essentially prove that he beat you? Because he didn't. One third of Clinton supporters say Trump election is not legitimate. I think he's an illegitimate president that didn't really win. You are absolutely right. You can run the best campaign. You can even become the nominee. And you can have the election stolen from you. The 2016 election was stolen. Got a nicer way to say that? Say Russia hacked the election. Russia hacked our election. Russia hacked our election. A little louder, please. Russia hacked our election. That was a 9-11 scale event. This was a kind of cyber 9-11. American a cyber institution. 9-11. Yes. Russia hacked our election. Russia, you know, of course, hacked our election here. Half of Clinton's voters believe the conspiracy theory that Russia hacked election day votes. We know that they were into voting rolls actual interference with the elections themselves. We know it happened. Despite no credible evidence, 67% of Democrats believe Russia tampered with vote tallies. Hacking the U.S. election. Hacking the U.S. election. Russia hacked our election. The Russians hacked our election. Russia hacked our election. Russia hacked our election. Russian hacking of our election. Hacking of our of our election. Russia hacked our election. Russia hacked our election. Stolen election. Russia hacked our election. Russia hacked our election. The universal assessment that Russia hacked our most young Americans consider Donald Trump an illegitimate president. president. Illegitimate president. He's an illegitimate president. president. Why is he illegitimate? He just won an election. That's been said He's an fun. illegitimate president in my mind. That's it. I absolutely agree. Experts urge Clinton Kent to challenge election results. We will see how illegitimate his victory actually was. He's an illegitimate president. Russia hacked our election. Russians hacking our election. Hacked our election. Russia hacking our election. I don't see the president elect as a legitimate president. Trump is an illegitimate Obama president who stole well, the election. He is not a president. He's illegitimate. And my uh, biggest Russia fear is that he's going to do it again with the help of Vlad, <laughs> his best pal. It's terrifying. Would you be my vice presidential candidate? <laughs> Hillary Clinton voters call all to overturn election results. President More than 4 million people have already signed a petition on change.org calling for the electors of the Electoral College to, quote, ignore their states, votes, and cast their ballots for Secretary wow. Clinton. Trump didn't actually win the election in 2016. We are the victims of a bloodless coup. He didn't win the general election. Yo, Electoral College, make Hillary Clinton yeah, president, period. Yeah. Donald Trump is an illegitimate president. He's not about illegitimate president. Dems don't accept Trump as a legitimate president. This wasn't on the level. This election was not on the level. I don't think he's a legitimate president. Our election wasn't legit! He got his victory Let's from cheating. Yes, Trump, Trump cheated. Trump 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 right? cheated. The 2016 election. He's an illegitimate president. No validity. No credibility. Mm. And because of that... Anger at what some see as an illegitimate true. president. It will not be a peaceful change of power. A number of incidents turned violent. Protesters hurled trash cans, flash bombs, and objects at police. Several Several officers injured. Protesters threw rocks and smashed windows, leading to more confrontations, injuries, and arrests. The chaotic scene just blocks outside the secure area of the inauguration. If denying election results is extreme now, yeah. why would So let's, let's be really clear. That comparison that you made is just ridiculous. Protests against Donald Trump's election victory surged overnight, and some became violent. Violence erupted on the streets of Portland during the second straight day of protests over the election of Donald Trump. Some protesters launched fireworks and other projectiles at police. Several people began vandalizing cars. Some demonstrators smashed store windows. Protesters faced off with police in other cities too, including Oakland, Denver, and Minneapolis. Violent protests continuing now for the third day in a row. Some 4,000 angry demonstrators over Trump's election victory taking to the streets. Officers in front of thousands of protesters in what police called a riot. Setting fires, taking their frustrations out on cars and buildings. <laughs> People threw projectiles at officers and damaged property as well. I threw a trash can at them because I'm angry. One woman driving through was attacked as someone used a bat to smash her windshield. They are undermining our democratic process, everything that we stand for. People literally have the memory of flies. Like, they, they just don't remember any of this stuff, really. Mm -hmm. um, so, nope. I didn't want to... I remember. I remember. Yeah, so... Uh, Again, shout out to Orf. Everybody <laughs> subscribe to Orf. Follow him on YouTube. He's up to 70, almost 75,000 subs. I think it's Ma, 
Orphalia, right? O R F A L E A. Orphale. 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 Orphalia. Orphale. Orphale. Okay. Yeah. He he does a whole video about it. It's really funny. But we'll go back to the uh, to the slide and to the article. But this video is, after all, packed with clips of people like Karine Jean Pierre saying that uh, the 2016 election was stolen. Again, all all the things that. Our old pal Keith Olbermann proclaimed the public wouldn't stand for the bloodless school called voting. <laughs> Chris Hayes said Trump cheated. Conga line of officials from Adam Schiff to Elizabeth Warren insisted foreigners had hacked our elections. And these videos made what we believe to be a powerful, legitimate point about the framing of the last two presidential elections. The first is that despite Hillary's reluctant capitulation on election night 2016, the Democratic Party is, as a whole, as well as key officials in the government, never recognized Donald Trump as a legitimate president. Hillary Clinton, in fact, spent four years leading a public relations campaign insisting that A, she actually won in 2016, B, Trump only won because of a fraud and actual vote tampering, and C, Democrats going forward should not recognize his victory should he win a second time. Everybody, no, none of that happened, right? Our view, it took whether it's Stop the Steal or Russiagate, Denying a president's legitimacy because you believe a conspiracy theory is the same behavior and should be treated the same way. YouTube, by administering a strike to ORF, is sending a message that you may leave videos of Hillary Clinton saying we know that they were into the voting rolls, they, they being the Russians, or Oldman warning that it will not be a peaceful change of power, which of course we know it was, or that the current president and vice president agreeing that their predecessor didn't really win. All of that, YouTube's required Surgeon General type warning called EDSA, which is their clump, clunky acronym for Educational, Documentary, Scientific, or Artistic Content. In other words, you may leave up such statements without mm. pointing out that they're unproven, incorrect, or irresponsible. Mm. This is the Except fact that... Though, right. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, no, no, I'm just saying, except they do. Like... Right. Right. This is the de facto. This is a de facto endorsement of such behavior when committed by certain people. When others do exactly the same thing, it's conspiracy theory, incitement, and even insurrection. Hmm. <clears throat> Donald Trump, of course, is running for president. I mean, again. this goes from yeah, yep. This goes I, from... I mean, with COVID, with like, like we're gonna get into the Hunter stuff, which has been fucking like anyway. And we'll even shout out Garland Nixon, Go on. who got who got censored off of Twitter this yep. week because of a joke about Palestinian people, and and he pissed off Anthony Blinken, who then made a phone call to the State Department, and he got mass reported by NAFO, a uh, uh, clown pedo bots, those stupid Shiba Inu losers that that sit in their mommy's basement and get paid by the federal government to to troll actual people, and and to clog discourse and to. Try to shape a narrative that there aren't Nazis in Ukraine when there evidently clearly are. But anyway, so Donald Trump is running for president again, of course. His behavior after the 2020 vote will become Exhibit A in the case against his reelection, perhaps even rightly so. But YouTube is signaling early on that it will not permit press outlets to compare his behavior and his statements to those of his political opponents. See, now what I think is really happening and, and interesting here is that you're not allowed to criticize the current president. I kind of feel like YouTube mm -hmm. was doing this to people that were censoring, that, that were saying this about Trump during Trump's presidency. It's almost like you're trying to cause an mm -mm. insurrection. No, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I think Trump supporters no, tell because you that they, did. Uh, they clearly allowed CBS, MSNBC. No, not the other way. Like, no, when Trump won, they, there was constant videos and like. I mean, every joke on on Saturday Night Live, every joke on was Jimmy about Kimmel, Trump. and no, I, 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 like, I get that. I, I know, and that. and how he's didn't win, and how they hacked the elections, and how, you know, yet if we if we talk about it at all, right? Even so, from a lefty perspective. So this isn't just like, about statements. I mean, the from convo couch has been demonetized for two plus that crap two forever years. since January sixth, basically. Yeah. Uh, same thing with Nico and Slow yeah. News Day. Um, yep. Yeah. This isn't just about statements from individual has-beens like Hillary Clinton, but from official bodies like DHS and FBI. 
Just like Trump, those official organizations have repeatedly engaged in a form of election denial, warning that upcoming elections would be packed full of efforts by foreign countries to, quote, amplify doubts about the integrity of U.S. elections and to, quote, hinder candidates perceived to be particularly adversarial to countries like China and Russia by, quote, spreading disinformation. Yeah. These official statements are more or less exactly what Donald Trump was up to when he announces before an election that it's rigged, quote unquote. It's what he was doing weeks before the vote in 2016 when he said, quote, of course, there's a large scale voting fraud happening on and before Election Day. And it's what he was doing on Election Day when he said the machines, you put down a Republican and it registers as a Democrat. And they've had a lot of complaints about that today. Which, by the way, is exactly what happened in Texas. I can tell you, by the way, for yeah. fact that that vote flipping happened. And that was before things turned his way. The idea is to prepare the audiences to refuse to accept results of a vote should they go the wrong way. If you win, it's the cleanest election in history, which is exactly what the Democrats say. If you lose, the electorate is already primed to throw a fit. It's dirty, unpatriotic behavior. And now it's a routine element of all elections coming from the Trump side and from officialdom. Worse, it's the dirtiest kind of pool to have efficient official agencies like the FBI or DHS repeatedly leak that Russia or China prefers Bernie Sanders or Trump and is either trying to sabotage or already succeed in sabotaging elections on their behalf. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, what purpose public leaks of such assessments serve? These have a patina of legitimacy because the organization's involved, but there is bereft of evidence as Trump stopped the steel claims and perhaps more corrupt because they're so flagrant a misuse of tax dollars. Hard to argue with there. Um, get back to yes, pointing out Graham Elwood has also been demonetized since, since then. Um, the press has to be allowed to make these points. If it isn't, Silicon Valley is encouraging one form of, of unethical behavior while condemning another. Moreover, it's punishing the media for factually accurate reporting. There is no explicit or implicit message in ORF's videos that either the 2016 or 2020 vote was compromised. His videos are the opposite of election denial. He's clearly making the point that no matter who does it, denying election results is irresponsible. YouTube punishes him for that message. It just sends a message that all these bad actors are right and the system really is rigged. Hmm. <laughs> We've asked politely for a reversal of their decision. YouTube must do the right thing here. So this happened on November 18th. So that was about nine days ago. I think it was Friday. On Sunday, Monday morning, I see this. Holy shit. Again, mm -hmm. YouTube censors reality. Boost inf disinformation. Part one. Now, there's no part two yet. And again, please go subscribe to TK News by Matt Taibbi. He also features ORF. He also features other censored content creators. His Substack is a, a kick-ass little outlet, and I'm going to use it as an example of things that you can actually do with Substack because I'm a big fan. Um, he's do he's doing a podcast. He's amplifying smaller channels and writers. He's bringing in video editing and stuff. He's doing call-in shows. Shout out, you know, again, I've been a fan of Matt Taibbi's for long before since I started doing news. Um, he's one of the people that I really do respect his opinion and, and his take, even when he's wrong. And he can be too, but he's usually right. So. What happened? What happened? New news today underscores that they continue to hype fake news. Yes, they do. Why? Because of the Hunter video. So mm. we're 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 gonna show this video. And I'm feeling like I may need to. Yeah, but you're not going to be able to put it back, so you might I as think, well do I think it, I can. and then I think if I can. it gets pulled, it's up on Rockfin. I think I can, but anyway. I, we've never... 
I don't think you can turn the YouTube ones back on once the you, event is over. Because do you events. remember? Do you remember when my power went out in the hotel room and I was able to bring it all back? From like yeah, that's because you're using restream in now. restream. Oh, that's right. Okay. Anyway, so all right, we'll leave it up, and I'm gonna take the risk for INNN for my channel. But yeah, and we want to get if it gets pulled, we'll we'll put it, it on pulled, Rockfin. We're gonna yeah, except we're, we're we're getting close to monetization, and I'm I'm really. We'll we'll talk about it. Yeah. Anyway, as subs are by now aware, I'm very upset yeah. about, and this is Matt Taibbi's recent. He's upset about YouTube's recent decision to censor a factually accurate video about a quote unquote rigged election comments about orbs. Right. As it happens now, what I want to do is I'm going to search for new ways to embarrass the company until they reverse their decision. So as it happens today, offers an excellent opportunity. This is three days later. Fuck. CBS this morning today came out with a story claiming that they obtained a copy of the of the Hunter Biden laptop sent for an independent forensic review and determined that it appears genuine. This follow-up from the New York Times back on March 16th, and more importantly, the exhaustive earlier work of political reporter Ben uh, Shrek, Shrekinger, Shrekinger, I don't want to mess that up, mm -hmm. confirming key emails in, this, in his yep. book, The Bidens, Matt did an exceptional job, or back in March in the video above, compiling clips of people who went on air and with absolute certainty proclaimed the laptop a lie or altered or fake or pure distractions. And of course, Russian disinformation. All in quote. Whether or not you thought the actual content of the story was important, the suppression of the Hunter Biden laptop affair was a crossroads moment in the history of modern censorship. YouTube played a major role in this event. I say Glenn Greenwald, by the way. This was a case in which yep. major news media, including CBS, NBC, PBS, CNN, and other countless outlets, actively embraced disinformation in the form of a group letter from 50-plus former intelligence officials saying the laptop story, they referred to a laptop op, had the classic earmarks of a Russian misinformation operation. All the aforementioned news agencies fell for this, as did Twitter, which blocked access to it, of course, in what then CEO Jack Dorsey later admitted was a total mistake. They even blocked it in DMs. And Facebook, who's increasingly adrift founder Mark Zuckerberg, later told Joe Rogan the story was throttled down at the suggestion of the FBI. We watched that pretty recently, I remember. You might have covered that on INN News. Yep. I think so. YouTube also pushed this in, this disinformation campaign it still does despite the total absence of evidence from <laughs> ever existing that the laptop was either fake or part of a russian information operation and a growing pile of evidence that the laptop is real youtube continues to leave unmolested its site on its site countless videos promoting the conspiracy theory that's what it is let's be clear that the laptop story is both bunk and an intelligence op it's a theory and now it seems that it is more a theory that it was bunk and that it's actually real. So he provides a brief sample of materials that they still have up unmarked as misinformation or disinformation. About are, are they peddling allies from 2020 about the Bidens of a Russian disinformation? And that's on PBS. Mm -hmm. Here's one on Nora O'Donnell on CBS. Here's one on CNN from Wolf Blitzer. Introducing Alex Marquardt talking about actually could be part of Russia's latest and very massive disinformation campaign in the U.S. presidential election. Okay. I mean, he should have just said, like, huge. 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 Yeah, I know. I was waiting for that. Okay. Huge. Dana Bash. Also, Nicole Wallace starts off humorously, scoffing at the idea. Okay, bashing of disinformation on Biden. This looks, walks, and talks like Russian intelligence. Uh -huh. Right? Suggesting that Biden is a corrupt politician, one of the most vetted politicians in the country. Yeah, the big guy. Uh huh. Jeremy Bash, former CIA chief of staff, now posing as a media figure, concurs. Of course. Again, because they used to just infiltrate the media by compromising the personalities. Now they just put them on TV. This looks yeah. like Russian intelligence. This walks like Russian intelligence. It looks like a classic Russian playbook disinformation mm -hmm. campaign. Uh -huh. 
John Brennan, former CIA director. You know how he's lying, right? Steve Brennan. Yep. His lips, his lips are moving. It is for all these reasons that we write Ugh. to say the, the arrival on the U.S. scene of emails purportedly belonging to Vice President's sons, Hunter, much of it related to his time serving on the board of Ukrainian gas company Burisma, has all the classic earmarks of a Russian information operation. Mm-hmm. Here it is on 60 Minutes. Wesley Stahl. And all these links are in this article for PK News, which we will put in the description after the show. There are plenty more of these. Again, he's got tons of examples. YouTube and Google now becoming exhibit A and the ultimate truth about any attempt to moderate content at scale. If you make even a good faith attempt, effort to even weed out, quote, disinformation, relying on official bodies to help, what you'll be left with is official disinformation. (laughs) Brilliant. But this isn't Mm -hmm. a good faith effort to weed out untruths. YouTube has become a place that that censors true content, but traffics in official and quasi-official deception. Again, you mentioned COVID. It's become indistinguishable from the state censorship bureau. If they feel they're right about their decisions, they should be happy to explain themselves to people like me. Until then, they can expect more love letters from this address. Hell yeah, Matt. Subscribers should know I don't believe in letting things like this go. But I also don't believe in annoying faithful readers. In the future, if there are similar entries in this campaign, I'll make them public but won't clog your email with notices. The idea is to be painting Google's backside, not yours. Well, share with me, man. Share with me, and I'll get it out there. Because we definitely want to call out censorship, too. And again, follow M. Taibi. Give... It's taibi.substack.com, T-A-I-B-B-I.substack.com. This is last name.substack.com. It's how you follow and sign up there. Arif is playing the drums because he's got energy. Restream and restream. Don't cross the streams. That's right. Rick, don't cross the streams. Anthony's giving us the hot pepper. I don't know why, but we're getting a hot pepper because something spicy there. Um. Anyway, we've got... One more story. Okay, that's good. At 11.15. We're, we're, we're good on time. Uh, oh, you know what? I did mm-hmm. want to show the Hunter, Hunter sh- uh, uh, thing. So let me do that. Okay. Okay, let's do it. Four and a half minutes. And... Incriminating evidence allegedly found on a laptop belonging to Biden. <laughs> Some sort of Russian disinformation campaign effort. One eternity later. Biden emails finally authenticated according to the New York Times. Yeah, it's rewind time. It's a lie. (laughs) Altered or fake. Unverified emails. The story did not quite land due to the lack of verification. Listen, what can't be verified? The laptop. Why do you say that? Well, because it can't be verified. I don't even want to report this. This is the one of the most powerful families in Washington. I'm a journalist. Okay, I would love if you guys would start doing that verification. No, we're not going to do your work for you. It's a journalist. Contrary. Not anymore. (laughs) <laughs> well, we know. These emails are made up. Not really oh, stories, so just pure distractions. No serious journalist should fall for it. It's a journalist's Contrary job to, to, to find out if this is purposes. verified. The bottom line is we cannot confirm the story. Experts say the emails cannot be authenticated. The mainstream yeah. media is not reporting on this story because we can't Dr. authenticate Smoky. this material. Dr. Um, says so. uh, the Hunter Biden laptop material is genuine. Genuine. This is a classic example of the right-wing media machine. It just lacks credibility. The fact that it appeared in the New York Post. The only place low enough to put this orphan bastard story in print. Obvious disinformation. It is so obviously a Russian operation. So obviously disinformation. So obviously a Russian plot. Tell me why it's so obviously a Russian plot to you. This is uh, just a classic textbook Soviet-Russian tradecraft at work. Right, exactly. And this is classic, very classic. Uh, Russian.
Russian disinformation tactic. Your classic disinformation Russia. campaign. We shouldn't look at it as anything other than a Russian it's disinformation like operation. Like operation. Russian. Known Kremlin disinformation. Russians would this be my number one guess. Obviously, Russia. Russian disinformation <laughs> operation. Russian disinformation. <laughs> Russian, Russian, disinformation. Russian, Russian, Russian disinformation. It does bear the hallmarks of okay. Russian disinformation. Hunter Biden's story is Russian disinfo. Hunter Biden's laptop looks like it's tied to Vladimir Putin in Moscow. Well, if Vladimir Putin shuts Vladimir. us down, it's been, I don't know. it's been real, guys. I, I truly... The, you don't know. The serious yeah. answer is that I truly do not know the answer to that. Did you leave a, a laptop with a repairman not in Wilmington? <laughs> not, not that I remember. <laughs> no. no. I Where's the eyes bugging out? Are you missing the laptop? Not that I know of. Whoa. Not that I know of. This whole operation looks right out of the Kremlin playbook. Crack. The playbook of Russian disinformation. Russian disinformation put into the haystack. Russian disinfo. Sounds like bullshit. I mean, who takes a laptop with their most personal information, That's drops it off, and never comes back for it? <laughs> you read the book and you'll realize that I wasn't keeping uh, tabs on possessions very well for about a four-year period of time. A Russian disinformation campaign. Disinformation mm. from the Russians. Is that when you were just trying very hard to spread? disinformation about Joe Biden. The Biden they, campaign says this the, is the, Russian the, disinformation. The There's language. overwhelming evidence that the Russians are engaged. I know, Russians right? Are engaged. It's a Russian plan. Russian, Russian like disinformation. Nobody lies. believes it except the, his and his good friend, yep. Rudy Gianni. So could have been yours. Of course, Rudy certainly. Gianni. Here it is. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. Of History will expose you all as fools and useful oh, idiots hot. for the Russians. Oh. <laughs> the idiocy. The sheer idiocy. <laughs> 50 former intelligence officials signed on to a letter yesterday saying that the New York Post story about Hunter Biden's emails has all of the classic earmarks of a Russian disinformation campaign. Russia Giuliani. Don't trust anything that he's telling you. This is Russian disinformation. Russian disinformation campaign. Russian disinformation. Russian disinformation campaign. Russian disinformation meant to harm our democracy. Disinformation by the Russians. The fruits of a foreign intelligence operation. Part of that bigger Russian disinformation effort. A Russian intelligence operation connected to an ongoing Russian disinformation effort linked to a foreign intelligence operation connected to an ongoing Russian disinformation effort tied to an ongoing Russian disinformation effort connected to a Russian disinformation campaign linked to a foreign intelligence operation likely coming from Russian right, Russian intelligence to people familiar with the matter told NBC News. We now know that Russian disinformation or foreign disinformation or even this, you know, campaign disinformation period is as dangerous to our democracy as anything exposed in these emails. Or like disinformation mm. being perpetrated by you freaking clowns in the corporate media who's paid stenographers and paid whores and paid propagandists on behalf of the State Department and the war machine and the pharmaceutical companies. And the automakers to a point, but <clears throat> um, some of the worst people on the planet. So th thanks for that. Um, again, go follow Orf. Go follow Matt Taibbi. Go support their work. Support their channels. We do. Big fans. Appreciate them. All right. So I do have one other story, and this was a pretty big one. Um, Ukraine goes dark. And mm -hmm. again... Where's the corporate media on this one? I did not really hear them talk about the lights going out in all of Ukraine. Oh, and they 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 did, but it was it was Russian Putin, scum. Russian scum. Yeah, it's exactly. Yep, it's like they but, did. How dare they hit? You, you know, all the power plants. Like it's gonna um, hurt civilians, uh, right? That is, by the way, so... But that pipeline, though, that pipeline wouldn't have done that either. That pipeline, what? Well, no, that went through there. I'm but sorry? Yeah, they forgot to pay their light bill, I guess, according to Big Mad Crab. Again, shout out to Crab for making the thumbnail. But that is an overhead shot, a satellite shot, and we're going to start with that. Satellite images of Ukraine, the first image, which is actually, it's in reverse. The first image was from January 27th of this year at night. Second yeah. image is from November 23rd. Yikes. Yep. Um, Houston. Somebody forgot to pay the we light. We have a problem. So what the hell is going on here? So I'm going to ask my friends over at Moon of Alabama. Indie Media Award honorees. To Alabama. Another $100 billion? No, that's not even enough, Eric. We They want even more than that. But Ukraine lights out. 
No water and soon no heat. Oh my god. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's see what's going on here. Earlier today, and again, this was just the other day, the twenty third, four days ago. Earlier today, the Russian military shut down the Ukrainian electricity network. Previous attacks had limited the, the distribution capacity to some fifty percent of demand. Cold blackouts or other several hours per day allowed to give some electricity for a few hours to most parts of the parts of the country. The attack today created a much larger problem. Not only were distribution networks attacked, but also so the elements that connect Ukraine's electricity production facilities to the distribution network. All four nuclear power plants of Ukraine with their 15 reactors are now in shutdown mode. Nothing to see here. Please disperse. So Kiev, along with most other cities of Ukraine, no longer has electricity. You saw the overhead shot of nighttime. And, and there are some other pictures yep. and articles. Moldova is likewise affected as it receives some 20% of its electricity from Ukraine. When it, when the Ukrainian network shut down, Moldova. only the local thermal power plant, power plant shut down too. The only one shut down. The only local power, power plant shut down. It's likely that it can be switched on again, but that can be a complicated process. Limited electricity imports from the European system into Ukraine may still be possible, but possible, but that electricity would only be available in Ukraine's western cities. For today's attack, WAPO reported the, of the difficulties in repairing the network. As we had explained here before, Russian attacks are hitting the transformers that connect the national 330 kilovolt backbone network. These are hard to replace. Sorry to hear that. As the scope of the damage to Ukraine's energy systems has come into focus in recent days, Ukrainian and Western officials have begun sounding the alarm, but are also realizing they have limited recourse. Ukraine's Soviet-era power system cannot be fixed quickly or easily. In some of the worst-hit cities, there is little officials can do other than to urge residents to flee, raising the risk of economic collapse in Ukraine and a spillover refugee crisis in neighboring European countries. Thanks, NATO! Yeah, Ukrainian Prime Minister um, said that about half the country's energy infrastructure was out of order following the the bombardment. No, you're out of order. For weeks, Russian this missiles whole have... courtroom's out of order. Yeah, this whole country's Sorry. out of order. What? It's more like it. No. Um, <laughs> yep. For weeks. Russian missiles have targeted key components of Ukraine's electrical transmission system, knocking out vital transformers without which it is impossible to supply power to households, businesses, government offices, schools, hospitals, and other critical facilities. Basically, what you would want to do if you want to take out a government that is shelling its own people and not yeah. willing to recognize independent yeah. countries, the independent republics in, in the Donetsk, uh, Lugansk, and, you know, Crimea that we talk about. But during a briefing for reporters yep. on Tuesday, nine years, head of Ukrenego, which is the state run power grid operator, called the damage to the new power system to the power system colossal. Yeesh. That's a that's a word that mm. you don't want to see the head of a power system talking about. Russians, yeah. he said, were mainly targeting substations, nodes on the electrical grill, grid where the current is redirected from power stations. The main components of these substations are auto transformers, both high tech and high cost equipment that is difficult to replace. Well, high cost is not a problem when you're getting hundreds of billions of dollars from the US. But what, what do you think the people will do if they don't have power? Well, that's what the, that, that's what the Russians you are know. counting on and why they're targeting the infrastructure system. A list yes. of urgent needs from yeah. DTEC, the country's largest private energy company circulating in Washington, lists dozens of transformers along with circuit breakers, bushings, and transformer oil. But it's the auto transformers, the heart of the substations. The words, in the words of this uh, this minister, or this head of the energy uh, uh, faction, that are at the top of Ukrainians' list of needs and the key to keeping the country's electrical grid functioning. 
What happened to Burisma, by the way? <laughs> Ukrainians have tried to buy up um, every auto transformer they can find, as going as far as South Korea to purchase auto transformers, but they still need to, to place orders for more to even be built. Talk about supply chain issues. Yeah. Quote, we try to collect everything around the world that they have now and order more. An advisor to Ukraine's energy ministry quoted. Any attempts to repair the network are useless as long as Russia continues to attack it. And yet they won't call for a ceasefire. To stop these attacks requires a political solution, and Ukraine will have to give up and find some agreement with Russia. Maybe they'll actually listen at some point. Russia also attacked some of the natural gas sources Ukraine has. Ah, we asked about Burisma. Russia last week broadened yep. its targets. Uh, their chief executive of Ukraine state energy company Naftogaz said in an interview that a massive rocket attack hit 10 gas production facilities in Kharkiv and Poltava regions, including Shebelinka, one of the largest production and drilling areas. Yikes. Of course, we will do our best now to recover, but this will take time and resources and material. Time is of the essence because winter is now. Yes, winter is coming. <laughs> this does feel very Game of Thrones. Yep. And I saw a quote like from the Russian, uh, from the Ukrainian first lady about how they're willing to live without power and heat for two to three years. Good luck with that. The targeting of the gas supply was a critical development, said Victoria Wojciska, who's a former member of parliament, now working with civil society groups on getting Ukraine the equipment it needs. If Moscow takes out the gas system, she said, cities and villages across the country would become, quote, uninhabitable. Kelly, good night. Thanks for hanging out. As always, love you. Russian gas opinion. provider Gazprom has announced that it will reduce the transport of gas through Ukraine to U European customers as the Ukraine is stealing from it. Of course they are. So, Gazprom has noticed, said that it noticed some of the gas intended for Novo Moldova under a contract with the local gas firm is being diverted <laughs> by Ukraine. If the imbalance in gas transit continues, Gazprom will start reducing gas flows via Ukraine on the morning of November 28th. Russian gas giant said today, as carried by Russian news agency TASS. That's actually in the morning, so we'll have to find out and follow up if that happens. Without electricity, yep. it's also no water flowing in the water distribution cities and systems of the cities. Without water, toilets can't be used. Public hygiene will suffer. And oh yeah, the internet in Ukraine is also down. They're not talking about this anywhere. But Ukraine's winning, right, guys? I, I had people tell me over Thanksgiving weekend they think Ukraine's winning. This does not sound like winning. Mm -hmm. A country no. that is becoming uninhabitable has little chance to wage and win a war. When there is no transport, no electricity, no heat, and no communication, everything becomes incredibly difficult. The refugee stream, all this will cause, will increase pressure on Europe to push Ukraine into negotiating peace for Russia, uh, peace with Russia. Tough conditions will be applied, but there is no other way out of this mess. Yes, holy shit, Russia is still providing gas to Ukraine. How about that? While still bombing them. Because Ukraine has to buy it from somebody, they need to power their country. Throughout the last weeks, Ukrainian attacks on the front line have been remarkably ineffective. Again, not telling you this on mainstream corporate media, there is no longer any coordination of larger formations. The units attacking now are mostly only company sides or even smaller. And they link a 12-minute video that showed drone footage of such an attack that was published yesterday. Quote, I can't believe I missed this one today. The editing is unbelievable. A 12-minute clip of Ukrainians conducting what was sadly a suicide attack on Russian trenches. Just to be pummeled by SU-25s, infantry, heavy mortars, a tank, MLRs, and, a, and finished with an SU-34 bombing run. Oh. So basically making God. sure that the area was completely destroyed and there was nothing left. Completely cleared. Yeah. Sitting on top of an armored infantry vehicle, some 20 Ukrainian soldiers drive up to a fortified area and enter the first empty row of trenches. 
From there, they try to attack the second row of trenches that is held by a handful of Russian soldiers. The Ukrainian troops seem to be fairly well equipped with helmets and armor vests, but they have no support. The Russian infantry fights back. It's supported by well-targeted mortar fire, artillery, tanks, and air attacks. The Russians have drones up in the air that can see the whole scene. The Ukrainian units have nothing but their rifles and a few hand grenades. After the attacking platoon is destroyed, the Russian artillery attacks and destroys the industrial area from where they had been coming. The whole operation ends up as a complete disaster. All Ukrainian troops involved seem to be dead. The Russian side seems to have had no or only few casualties. This place took th this battle took place some time ago, but it's still incredible to watch now that they made the concise edit. If we consider that such attacks have been ha happened by the dozens every week, the Russian Minister of Ministry of Defense estimates. Uh, estimates of Ukrainian daily losses aren't that far-fetched. Well, there are several such attacks per day, and only a few are successful. Very few are successful. So from today's clobber list, I can't even imagine that there is such a thing, but there's a link here to a clobber list. So here is in Donetsk. Mm -hmm. Units of Russian army continued their intense operation more than 60 Ukrainian servicemen and five armored fighting vehicles have been eliminated. Again, this was war. I'm, we're anti-war. We don't want to see anybody killed. Um, this we, we want to see this stop. There's no reason for any of this anymore at all. In South Donetsk direction, artillery fire and, and decisive actions by Russian troops, Russian troops have repulsed an attack by the AFU with up to a company's tactical group forces towards Pavlovka. In addition, as a result of a preemptive fire attack, enemy reserves advancing from Ugladar have been destroyed. Uh, a sabotage and recon group of the AFU has been destroyed near Nova Dakrova. So again, you can see like there's a bunch. The enemy losses amounted to more than 40 Ukrainian servicemen killed and wounded, three armored vehicles, an MTLB, and four pickup trucks. They're taking out a bunch of stuff here, it seems like. Okay, again, you've got near Lugansk, supported by artillery fire and heavy flamethrower systems. As a result, artillery, Russian artillery fire, more than 30 Ukrainian servicemen, two motor vehicles, and one mortar have been destroyed. Okay, again, they're just showing in different areas <clears throat> another 20 servicemen. Okay, 72 artillery units, and, and they're going to add this up, and he's going to say, they're going to say, that are, that adds up, that are, that is at least 150 dead Ukrainian soldiers just there. I do not understand how the Ukrainian command is still ordering such senseless attacks militarily. It should have long gone into defensive mode. It would save Ukrainian lives and would make it more costly for the Russians to attack. But they're under orders, we know from there. Like how you said, don't. Yep. You were like, don't. I don't understand. I but, sounded Canadian or like you because Scotty. it said no. It said a, yeah. It, it said do don't, not, don't, don't, and you read it as do. Oh, well, do Parliament. I don't know. Which has, by the way, no serious legislative function. Voted today for a non-binding resolution that declared Russia to be, and of course we know love to Mick Wallace and to Claire Daly, but and they called this out. It's ridiculous. That Russia is a state sponsor of terrorism. Really? Some Russians found this outrageous. A few hours later, the parliament was hit by a sophisticated cyber attack. The EP website was affected by a hacking attack, officials said Wednesday. How about that? Parliament President Roberta Metsola said it was a sophisticated attack and that a pro Kremlin group had claimed responsibility. Hmm. She noted that the attack followed the EU lawmakers' vote to name Russia a state sponsor of terrorism over its war in Ukraine. And her response, of course, is Slava Ukraini. Oh. That, ir that irrelevant Maltese conservative still has a lot to learn. Maltese friends, conservatives. Okay. Well, no, she's from she's literally from Malta. It's a fucking Parliament okay. president from Malta. Roberta I mean, but he's Metzola. also playing off the Yes. 
The Maltese Falcon. The, yes. the Falcon of the famous, yeah. Yes. So yeah. before we uh, head over and, and hang out, um, Man, these, are, these are all the links and all the different logos and all the different properties and all the different things you can check out. We got IndieLeft.com and IndieLeft.news and IndieLeft.media, which is the link tree to all the links, and IndieMedia.today and IndieMediaToday.com, which go to the Substack. And you've got independentleft.media, which also goes to the link tree, and independentleft.news, which is the main website. And oh yeah, independentleft.shop. We actually have a merch store for the Bong Father. And we have an INN shop as well. I think it's uh indie news dot yep. indie news dot shop. And you can go there too. Yep. So yep X, to answer your question. INN, we are a member channel of INN, and we are the founders of INN, but we are separate from INN. We are our own channel, and we're building both channels, as well as supporting all the other channels and members of INN who we love and appreciate. Uh, but, hey, and we're back to two shots. So, um, yep, X. So, says what the U.S. media also fails to report on is that there is a much bigger war between Russia and Ukraine. It's about the U.S. is losing its hegemony, and about the shift in economic and political power. 100%. They don't you want to talk about that. Multipolarity? You mean, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the BRICS okay. alliance. Yep. 100%. The economic um, sanctioning. The jam like, mom. I'm guessing that's yep. bad mom Anon. How are you? Welcome. Good to see you. And we've got Eric T. Red. Patron supporter of Indie Left. Appreciate you, my friend. Sabby Sabs, producer, engineer, extraordinaire. <clears throat> if destroying energy infrastructure is a crime, yes. Then what is the destroying of Nord Stream 1 and 2? Wait, actually, what we have found, dot com. Um, and again, I'm speculating here, and I'm going to be careful about what I'm speculating, but the evidence seems to point to a U.S. directed operation that was coordinated and executed by the Polish um, military and, and special forces in coordination with British special forces. And Kit Klarenberg has done a, quite a bit in the gray zone UK to uncover that. Shout out to Kit Klarenberg. He's also an Indie Media Award honoree. If you can go and give Kit Klarenberg a, a share on Twitter, he's awesome. Um, all right. So... Uh, let me turn off widget here, and let's get to some votes. I think you got some stuff ready, right? Mm-hmm. I do. Um, cool. I do have some. And I watch mindless shit. Boats that smash into other boats. Yay, Hello, it's everybody. the Reef Show. It's a, it's, All right, time, time it's to look time at Twitter. time for boats. It's time to look at Twitter. time for kidding. boats. Yeah, I know, right? We need a theme um, song for boats now. I thought we had one. Jimmy Dore is the theme song for boats. Yes, we see the spinning, and we're starting to get a little seasick. See that? I know, right? Thank you. Um, yep. See? You're welcome. Oh, it's just time for Twitter. Yep. Uh, I do see, in fact. Um, but you're not allowed. You have to do this. Um, where's the button that does this? I think it's this. There we go. Hey. Been a while. Um, nice. when, you, when your cousin asks if you want to take a little walk before Thanksgiving dinner, See, that's really funny. Face, you like, yes, I do. That's really funny because, um, when you asked me, you, you sent me a thing like, How was your Thanksgiving? I'm like, I didn't have a cousin to go take a walk with, it's literally going to be my response. So that's <laughs> so funny that you picked this, right. Isn't that in that in that nice? Well, there's that um, one, and then there's then there's the the famous so, meme of coming back from from going to going out for a walk with your cousin, and you come back with the red eyes. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sad news. Um, in in stoner in stoner news today. Um, I think the video speaks for itself, though. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no, oh, he no. fell off the stage because oh, he got Madness. high. I fell off the stage because <laughs> I got high. I was going to sing my song, but I fell off the stage because I got high. Oh boy. 
I nearly broke my neck. I just got high. <laughs> I nearly broke my neck, and I know why. Get, <laughs> get Afro Man on the stage again, please. Um, he was cool about it though. He's like, I fell because I got high. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, yes, he did. Um, nice. You you were talking about Dude. this? What the cousin brings Dude. for Thanksgiving? Dude. That's a really you good know? cousin. That's a really good cousin. <laughs> Isn't it though? Um, what about this cousin? Me and my cousins high as fuck upstairs listen to our family talk shit about us. Baby Sting. Fucking these boys. Baby yeah. Sting. Do, 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 yeah. do, do. Baby Sting. Do, yeah. do, do, do. Is that Eminem? Um, Is that Eminem with Sting? Maybe. I think, it, I don't know, it's some wrestling thing. I figured you would know. You know? Yeah, I don't know. Like who, I don't know. I AEW? Know, I know who Sting is, but I don't know who the other is. like new, new, new people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that is getting old. Anyway. Okay. Like. Um, isn't that cool? Is that a pepper shaker? I think it's cool. <laughs> no, it's a roach. That is a roach. Yes. I was joking. Oh. <laughs> God. Why are edibles always like cookies and candy and such? What if I want psychoactive ham? How about zooming in? What if I want that? How about it? Um, honey, what's wrong? You haven't touched your thrice baked potato. <laughs> the potato that bakes you back. Um, I think we've talked about the potato that bakes you back. Um, but dad zone already. We we've made it to dad zone. That was early. Yep. Oh, I need and some after this. And action. All right, it's very cold now. Are you sure you want to go inside in the water? Yeah. Henry, you need to think before you do. Okay. How you think? You look at mommy. Do you know? Do you understand that it's very cold now? Look at mommy. It will be very cold in your legs, on your feet. It's too cold. It may, will hurt your feet. Okay? You you know that before you go to the water, okay? Yeah. And when you get cold on your feet, don't cry for me. Do you understand? Because I already told you it is super, 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 super cold. You got it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got it. Okay, I'll give it water now. <laughs> Now, you sure, right? Uh, you can check with your feet first. Yeah. You still want to go to the water in the water? Yes. You uh, sure? Yes. Yeah. Don't go that deep. It's deep over there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to be yeah. laughing. <laughs> you hurt? Now, do you understand when mommy say it's cold? It's too cold, it will hurt you. <laughs> Mommy's kind of an <laughs> asshole, huh? I mean, but she was like, I told you. I mean, yeah. I did tell you. Yeah, I, I know. Like, oh boy. <laughs> you're like, I know. She did don't, tell him. Don't, don't let um, my wife see that. She would not like that. <laughs> no. She would not think that I think was she'd a good be okay. Mom. She would not think that was a good mom. <laughs> and she told him. Doesn't matter. Like. Because. Oh. 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 Daddy's got to wear a helmet next time. Bap. Oh, I heard that. Oh, I heard that. I think it's aluminum. Oh. Yeah, that was flying too. That hurt. <sighs> Lessons were learned, hopefully. Mentos? Uh oh. No. Mm -hmm. No. Oh, child. Oh, no, child. Oh, out of the nose. <laughs> nice. Out of the nose. Right out your sinuses. Oh. Woo. How good was that, <laughs> Chicky? Woo. Mm -hmm. Come on. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what does this picture tell you? Not my house. <laughs> what That's what it tells me. Tell you? Tells me it ain't my house. Not your house, huh? Oh. Like. Uh, I love the I love the dog. The dog is like the best part. Like it. that little guy. I didn't do I, it. I, I tried to tell her. <laughs> you know? Like uh, uh dot com. Sometimes you gotta let it it's, fail. It's, oh. it's specifically Rick Solis. It's specifically Darby kids Allen. are fucking okay. stupid. Darby Allen. I did not know Darby I Allen. Think. Yeah. Yes. Kids are fucking Who? stupid. What? The the wrestler next to shit. This thing. That's the name of the subreddit? No. Kids are fucking um, stupid is the name of the subreddit. Darby Allen's the, the wrestler. Okay, what's going on here? Yes. Um free grocery store. And stores. action. <laughs> yep. So it's they they have translation. This is a robbery. They're like a cop just came in. Robbery. <laughs> no. Did he? Cops don't stop crime. <laughs> this is a robbery. You sure? Well, good. You'll be here to report um, it afterwards. Write up a fucking report. Isn't that what you do? So... Six year old found this and started screaming, I found the golden ticket. I got a golden ticket. This is the golden ticket. I got a golden ticket. <laughs> well, in more Ugh. ways than one, sir. <laughs> in more ways than one. Yep. Yep. Um here we go. This one's good. You'll like this one think of you the have South this Park. in your house. That makes me think of the South Park episode. I got a golden ticket. <laughs> When he, when he gets it, a Tourette's, that's a Tourette's episode. So wrong and so awful in so yep. many ways, but so funny. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, you have one of these in your house. Mm. Well, five minus three. Five minus three equals two. Boy! Oh. Boy! See, I've, I've disabled that was the, that was the wrong boy to hear. I've disabled all the Alexas in my house, actually. <laughs> oh, have you? Oh yeah, that's nice. Um. Oh yeah. This one. Oh my God. Oh, you're gonna die. And who are you supposed to be? My name is Flash. Hmm. So that means you're really fast, hmm? It, it makes really fast. Why don't Why don't you show me how fast you really are? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's why. Wow. Why? That went a long way to touch. Uh, he went a long, long. Way I know. I know. The kid what had the a good hell? fucking impression, though. What the hell? That 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 was a long way to set that up. Hmm. <laughs> it was great. It was perfect. Just, um, just like this kid is. Oh. <laughs> um yeah, I He's don't okay. think I don't think he meant to do that. Oh no, our no. table. Well, he meant to land on the Yep. Yeah. Uh, oh no. Oh no, our, our table. table. What a great title. Oh no. no so that, that's not a so cookbook. So my 6-year-old is learning this spell. That's not a cookbook. Yep. Just No. Okay, well, it's we gotta explain it, right? This is supposed to be another O. Okay, let me see the new book that you made with the improved spelling. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Oh, he likes that scene. I there. mean, I know, right? Um. Oh God, just children, you know. Um, oh boy, more do I please. Know. Do I ever know? Oh no! <laughs> okay, that must be under kids are fucking uh, stupid. That must be. I hope. I hope so. Yes, it is, it is. That might be the new game. Is is is, is guess? <laughs> I know. Guess the subreddit. Guess the subreddit. Yep. Um. A what? Oh no! Um, I don't think that's what that's supposed to be. A what? And what is it? I don't know. <laughs> is it Santa? I don't... <laughs> oh, <Tina. laughs> I don't think it's supposed to be a willy. I think it's it's something you ripped off. Willy. <laughs> Come on, dude. Oh, dude. I, I'm sorry, YouTube. I'm so sorry. I swear. I'm so sorry. I didn't do it. He did. He did it. He what did do you it. mean? He did it. I swear. Oh, my word. Dude. <sighs> you just killed me. Oh. <laughs> what? Um. Oh. This is me at my phone. Oh. <laughs> he's been watching like papa do that too much oh you know wow. mm. <laughs> why is this freezing most uh, halfway through that's weird yeah it just does that sometimes <sighs> um it's enough though we got it so you got to teach your kids to drive not not too far from now you know, you're going to have to worry about that. That's going to be fun for you. What if, what if they did... What if they did... What if they did this? Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Break. Break! <sighs> what were you doing? Trying to hit the cop? <laughs> <laughs> well, like... Maybe. <laughs> the noise he the dad makes is slow just down, like slow down, slow down, break, break, <laughs> break, break. Welcome to Florida. Uh, yep, yeah. that's that seems about right. Um, what? This is great for my bilingual parents. Papa. Papa. Mama. Mama. Aguacate. Aguacate. Parangaricuti miquaru. Batica, 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 batica. Love it. Aguacate. I got that. But I got a quick ticket of a book. Sorry. It is very funny. It's like super fragile. Uh, um, yeah, those just two kids. Yeah, exactly. Um. Oh, this is so good. You're going to like this one. Use this. Get that off my wall. Motherfucker. <laughs> 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 oh. Oh. This. Get that off my wall. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> give me that. <laughs> she can't like, even. She can't even be mad. It's so funny. She's like, she's literally cracking up. While she's I know, it. right? That's great. Oh, uh, time. So, I think we've seen this one. I'm pretty sure I've shown this one, but I don't mind showing it again because it is that funny. Time. I'm crying because look, Teddy found the buzz cutter. Yeah. Eloise, turn around. Turn around. Oh. Oh. oh yeah. Look at shave the whole head. Do you like your haircut? No. <laughs> turn around. No. Why'd you let brother do that? She said she wanted me to do that a lot, and so I did it. And, okay. And she wanted to All right. Show it's me. just hair. It's hair, and it's gonna grow back. And mommy's okay. Mommy just had a little. I'm taking a shower to get ready for my night shift. 
cut Fred's hair? I know. <laughs> okay. Honesty, that's good. It's just hair. It grows back. Okay? Mommy, can I have my four hollow toes? You can have four hollow. Shabbat shalom. Mommy, he okay. don't have... <laughs> Shabbat shalom. Oh, uh, the eyeballs I, at the end. I I love that woman. She's <sighs> a saint. She's a saint. Because <laughs> I'll tell you, that would Shabbat not have been. Shalom. That would not have been Daddy's reaction. <laughs> can I can I have four holla? No. <laughs> like get out um, now would would usually be my immediate response. <laughs> you pulled it out. <laughs> she did it! Oh my god, good job, Mel! She pulled out my tooth! It was so nice when she pulled it out. Good job, Mel! Good job! <laughs> uh, the burb. A little burb boy. Um, you, you, you have this, right? <laughs> Sometimes you're human, they get too comfortable, so you have to keep them on their toes. So what I like to do is I pretend I'm walking away like Craig David. Then I come back and I bite them. <laughs> One, <laughs> two, three. Just and like I that. bite them. Oh. This one's good. I like this one. Full screen. Get out. Over the cat's tail. Get out. And... <laughs> now you lose the game, you dumbass. Go get these. Oh. <laughs> uh, where's Uncle Warren? We haven't Look seen what Warren kid got for Christmas. Cutting your own hair is a right of Christmas. Kid. I never did it, and I ain't saying nothing. And Colin, you better not say nothing to my kids, you guys. These guys talk to my kids, so they just show them where the show them where the no the encouraging where daddy's are, right? Dad, daddy's beard trimmer or anything. Mm -hmm. Look what Katie got for Christmas. Cats are jerks. Yes, Yipper. Oh. Oh, oh, catch oh. oh, I got you. Oh, 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 I got you. It's Ooh. just like the Hot Wheels. Fucker. Bip. Choo. Oh. I love it. I love it. That's a, that's smart. an amazing. That's a smart kitty. That's good. I might I have like to get that, that for, for, for Ben. I like it. What, 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 cats are jerks, you say? I'm sure Ben will do it at some point. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Colin. <laughs> Oh, you son of a bitch. I'm going up on a table. I'm going to drink it up there. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> yep. Fuck, you got the spin. That's oh, it. It's even better. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, that's so Ooh, good. fucking spilled. <clears throat> this one's good. We got some poppers. And the dog's like, the fuck? Okay. And what do you do? Shut him up. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Uh, Ow. Yeah. I'm with you. I just like the nah. wow, wow, wow. I love when that sucks. Nah. Those fucking puppers do that. All right. I got to be ready with the thing and go. Uh, uh oh. What 
It's under there. <gasps> Look at the face. <laughs> Dude. Ah, you I know. Dude, how did they even know? <laughs> how did they even know that the fucking thing was under there? Look at like that. Ooh. You caught me. <laughs> <gasps> you caught me. Um, the wolf. What the fuck was that? And yeah. action. <laughs> uh oh. oh it's a hanger. How do you shit? We, you gotta be careful. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh funny cat video is definitely good for a brain cleanse. Oh, yep. Okay. He knew he shouldn't touch that, but he did anyway. Oh, here we go. This is that instant regret. Oh. And I'm going to touch touch it. Oh, got a spiky oh, no, boy. No, no. Oh, oh, boy. God. oh, boy. Oh, God. Oh, All right. All right. I'm oh, good. <laughs> like, it's I'm a spiky gonna... boy. Don't, don't poke the bear. <laughs> <laughs> I love the just, like, terrified run, you know? <laughs> Orangutans are um, funny. Orangutans are funny. Yes, they are. They're they're really just like people, yeah. you know, which are equally as as ridiculous. What the fuck? Why is she sitting there so calmly? <laughs> I think it's a glass. Is demonstration. She is she psychotic? There's like there's like a ton of people behind there. Oh, okay. There's like a ton of people though. Look, like look, look at the people in the back. They're all like watching. Oh, you know, some, he's putting some anger into that. Some yeah. Pressure. Yep. I think high to, quality. I think we need to fear for Jenny's hammer proof life. glass. <laughs> I know, right? Um, what do you think about this guy's life, though? Is that a Warhol painting? Uh, uh, uh. What? Oh, goodness. <laughs> what the? <laughs> it's just the sound. <laughs> <laughs> That's and like England. the sound of By it coming way, out. That's New England. That's New England clam chatter. Is it? Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I know exactly cool. what that was. I've I've dumped I've dumped. What, what about what? this? What the? <laughs> How do you out. feel about this? Uh, look out! <laughs> um, I think a feeny. No, she loves guns, so this would not be a feeny. But I could see her. Yeah, not the no guns. Yeah, I could see her taking off. out the the do not sign and then definitely walk it out with a machine. Damn girl. Wait, is that <laughs> is that Laverne with a mustache what? and purple hair shooting that thing? N no. I don't no. Know. That looks like that looks like Aunt Bunny. No. It might even look like Lavar Burton. <laughs> oh no. Well. LeVar Burton? Jesus Christ. I don't know. <laughs> you Maybe fucking not. reading Rainbow up in this bitch? Maybe. Damn. Um. <sighs> so explain to me why the handle's so long. <laughs> what? He's dumb. Why is it that funny, first of all? <laughs> that I mean, it, because it's funny. Well, I guess, they're a but, little high. So that, that's, that's more than a little. What? Two? The power of three, dog. I think it's designed for a handicap, <laughs> for like a wheelchair for wheelchair use, honestly. But I mean, uh, sure, but I, like, it's the mean, only it's the only rationale that I can imagine. Oh, Rick Solo saying that that hair was a fifty cal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sure. Um, and Yipper saying that was cream of mushroom. You want pizza? Oh, that you is want you want some pizza, dog? Spaghetti o pizza. What is that? What does it say? 
Supreme Supreme Pizza. Oh, so that must be a Pizza Hut yeah. hat. Because Supreme Pizza has all those elements on it. <laughs> that might even be a Super yep. Supreme because it has also items. a play off the brand Supreme, but yes. You know? I didn't even know there was a brand. They make it that size. Yeah, it's pretty famous. Um oh, you're dude, saying yeah, about clam chowder? Yeah, we well we've we've seen a few of these, and I'm guessing you, you might have the other one too. Mm. Clam the canes, dude. I don't. Who oh! uh the other one is that I saw oh! around, and, I, <laughs> and I and I sent to Reef Caesar week, salad. Was the Caesar salad flavored candy canes? Yeah. And I've seen that floating everywhere. But my father like raised me on Caesar salad, so immediately that went to my dad, my brother. <laughs> Nice. Oh, God. Watch this shit. Ready? And action. And I'm gone, uh -oh, son. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm uh -oh. taking this with me. Uh-oh. Gotta throw it in the back and then get in. And then drive off. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just take this back. <laughs> Bring it back into the store. Nice, dude. That's great. Like, that's really isn't funny. that good? Um, uh, what else what? I got? Oh God! So World Cup's happening, right? That would be that would be. You know, there I don't know if you've attempt. heard sports. I'm guessing, I'm guessing the subreddit there was an attempt. That's that's where that belongs. But not. What could go wrong? Is where it's at. Oh, uh, the the other one. Yeah, yes. I think that was a there was an attempt. Um. So look at this shit. We go up for the save, and we. Oh, shit. Bye. Like, <laughs> bye. Bye. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Medic. Medic. <laughs> Medic. Um, speaking of, you want to see what happens when we get a goal? Goal. Uh, I know what this is. This is the Saudis. He took the fucking door, dude. He took the door. Oh, like, did you see him? He took the fucking yeah. door, dude. Look, look, he took the door. Well, the Saudis had the biggest hunts in the history of the World Cup. But yeah, I feel you. Oh, biggest, God. Up, biggest he upset took the, in the door, history, though. Biggest upset in the history of the World Cup. And yeah, nice. and he's then he definitely ripped the door off his hinges. God bless you. God bless you. Um, or Allah, this, this is this is sure a lot. Was it yep. England versus Iran? Um, was that England versus Iran? I, I thought that was the Saudis. I thought the Saudis won like a huge upset, probably. Um, but anyway, this guy's the life of the party. Oh. <laughs> what, what, what? Why? <laughs> but, but, um, but why? I... <laughs> but why? But why? But why? But why? Rick telling me yes, the Saudis did win. I believe that was that yeah. was a bunch of dudes <laughs> yeah, celebrating the... the Saudi win. <clears throat> yep, that is correct. This is hilarious. Oh my god, that is one resilient ass pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that. I mean, if you've oh. ever done that at full steam and hit concrete, oh, I know, thing, I know. It oh, sucks dude, so much. I just, I just felt that right like up my the arms. noise he made. I just felt that right up my the noise he made. Like, literally. Bang. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's worse. It's worse than a baseball bat. Like, oh. Wow. Hey, how'd that get in there? <laughs> what? Oh, Reef, come on, dude. What? I know, right? Reef. Self-portraits self are <laughs> not allowed. Come on. This is before I had the beard, I guess. I, I guess. Um. Oh my God. 
this fucking video. Which is brew is <sighs> what it says. Back. Ladies, you need to stop using small dick as an insult. It's body shaming and it needs to stop. <laughs> yeah. You tell him. <laughs> you tell him. <laughs> you tell him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just that the yeah is great. Oh, with the tears in his eyes. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. Ever yeah. Tell him. Nobody's ever stood up for him with his issues. <laughs> I know, right? Um, this one's also pretty good. And pepper. And pepper. <laughs> it's a column. It's literally That's a ridiculous. freaking column. I know. That's I awesome. Know. It's the best part. Oh, God. That's great. I love that so much. And pepper? <laughs> and I'm, I'm a big fan of All fresh right. ground pepper, but that's some pepper mill she had there. So you've oh. heard in a wolf in sheep's clothing, <laughs> now see a, a sheep, sheep in, in wolf's, wolf's clothing. clothing. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. Oh God. Wah, wah, wah. Oh. oh my word. <laughs> That's great, right? Um. Oh, Joe. Ooh. Oh. Scared by everybody. Oh. oh, God. I Joe, really want that photo to be Joe, real. Joe said that to me the other day, and I'm like, um, why isn't there an INN tag out? He's like, dude, sadly, I didn't make it. Like, <laughs> I, I know, damn I know. it. Yeah. So good, though, whoever did. Genius. Brilliant. Shout out to whoever did. Thank you. Okay, this is... Look at these handsome boys. Okay, that's totally not Vlad in the middle. <laughs> no, and it's definitely not Zelensky, and it's definitely not Kim Jong... Seoul? Kim Jong-un? Kim Jong-il! Il. Kim Jong-il, I think, one of them. Will Kim. Um. <laughs> yes. Yep, <laughs> Will Kim. Fucking fuck you, dude. Oh, oh, you, you can't little that. Kim that guy. You, you can't it. be a little Kim. Bro, you, you, I'm not, you can't I'm, be a little Kim. I'm far from the first to come up with that joke. I completely <laughs> ripped that off. God damn it. I know, but it's funny. Oh, uh, so, uh, the friend of the show, Oz, decided to make us uh. something. <laughs> I, I get that. It's Oz. And that's Jink. Oh my it's god. Like Jink. It's Jake. Holy fuck. <laughs> Jake with the kid oh, sunglasses on. God damn. That's <laughs> great, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, oh god, god, my eyes are bleeding. That's great. With the jank. I reference. love it so much. Thanks, Oz. Check out Roar Media. Shout out Oz. Yeah, they shout out to Roar. Beauty and the Boomer after dark on Saturday nights. They get more people watching than us, and they're awesome. Yeah. They support independent <laughs> content creators, and they're the they're the bar at the end of the street at, at the end of the night. The, end of the, the bees knees, as they Shana say. Shana does trailer park pundit. Um, she's great, and go we'll follow them for sure. Uh oh. Yep. Please All do. them chickens. We got a we got a break. We got a jail break. Somebody's got dinner. One chicken for me. <laughs> Thank you for dinner. <laughs> like it was just like freedom. Oh shit! Now I'm in a fucking Hyundai. You know. Um, <laughs> it is a little bit more spacious. Than oh my god. There. You know, it's really funny. Yep, definitely. Jay Moore actually does a whole bit about soap and how and how it's magical. Um, yep. Go back. You, it's you great. Go back to the beginning. Of Borrowing the a bar, oh. bar yep. of someone's soap that's been in their bum. In their bum. Like, how are you guys no, using but soap it's like your being house? In and around your bum and your nethers. Oh, you know, around. No zones. I don't know about in. But like when you're soaping yourself up. Yeah. Do you, do you, Ryan? You lather up your hands and then use your hands. 
<laughs> what? How are you using soap? <laughs> Is that actually how you use a bar of soap? Is that how you not? Oh my god! What have you been doing? Oh my god! You've been putting the soap. Don't make. Oh. <laughs> Don't make it. Oh, you soap I've been at your taking house. the bar into the areas that it needs to go. Are you supposed to just like flap it up in your hands Don't and then flap. and then scrub like Don't this? Say fluid flap. salt. You wouldn't lose it in any orifices. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I was today years old when I learned that you don't stick soap up your ass. Yes. <laughs> yes, she was today years old yep. when she learned that. Wow. Self-serve, yes, yeah, Eric. Oh, yipper. Oh, that. Yo. And here she was. Tom, Tom, I here she is at a Southern family function. Oh, no. <laughs> Beat up, Court. Two hands, two hands. Go, 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 girl. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> don't let go. Uh, whip. <laughs> oh, 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 I give her a 9.5. Oh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Russian gut, Russian judge gives him a uh, 9.5. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I am apparently, what do you give this guy? I'm apparently a purveyor of Russian Putin puppets, but it just has turned <laughs> yeah, on. Yes. Like, like marionettes. Turn, like, on, like turn, Putin turn, puppets. Turncoat Don did a video and he actually labeled INN as Putin puppets very comedically. And, if someone uh, wants to make me a Putin puppet, I am so down for that. Uh, like any kind of puppet. You know, I'm okay. I'm down. Why do Just I felt. Think that Just give me a felt one. He's about to be injured. Just to feel he like, might be. Is this, um, is this like, is he doing the karate kick? Want... kick? Green kick? Uh, we'll see. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh, oh, Mario! <laughs> oh, it's a me, a Mario. <laughs> I'm excited to try to do that. That's what. Mario. He ended yeah. up in the underwater pipes. Yep. Yep. I thought about sending this to you and being like, should we play this? Right? And then I'm like, ah, fuck it. It's going to be great. You know? Okay. m and minis. Hot dog. Halloween candy. Huh? What are you doing? I got M&M's. Can you hear it? Look, come here. Right. Over your head, you gotta keep as straight an arm as you can. Oh, okay. no. And then from that distance, you Dump have to it catch down. as many oh. M&M's in your mouth. Oh, oh, oh. So you're gonna do way better than me. Okay, pop the top. I count three. One, two, three, go. Oh, no, 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 no. With the hot dog in slow-mo. Come on. Where is it? Is she opening her mouth? She's opening her eyes. Yes. And here it comes. No. And here it go. <laughs> that face. Uh... Oh, that's so wrong on so many levels. And he is so getting divorced for that. Isn't it though? That is that is divorce yep. worthy. Sure. Yeah. Not the face, Yipper. Not um, the face. Yeah. Oh. Not the face. Bro, oh to kill god. Us. And action. Hey, bro, are you hot? Why are we going so fucking what? fast? Yeah, we stop. Nigga? We stop, yeah, what? Whoa! <laughs> whoa! Whoa! What the fuck? What the? Why fuck? are we going so fast? Like. Oh, just people doing dumb stuff with cars. It's like, what more could you ask for? Abranse culos que llegó la verga. Ahorita les voy a enseñar a estos cómo es que se levanta fierro aquí. Sana, babiche, what the fuck, motherfucker, bitch. I know, I got the end of it. Motherfucker, bitch. Yep, what the motherfucker, bitch. What the Well, just like at the end of the Macy's parade, 
Yep, you know, Santa Claus. You got to know that the the Santa's coming. Uh oh, he's on, on the a sled. rocket sled <laughs> with a selfie <laughs> stick. Look at the rod; oh, it's getting red, son. Yeah, look at that thing singing. I know. It's propane powered. That's three minutes long. Is it? <laughs> I didn't realize that it thing was three is minutes. glowing. Holy shit, is that thing glowing? Oh my god. Oh. Yeah, that must be getting pretty hot How on your awesome fifth, Santa. Holy shit. Is the whole thing going to be glowing like the middle one? Oh, ho, ho. Oh, no, no. Yeah, he set the thing on fire. He probably blew the engine. Yeah, the whole thing's on fire right now. Oh, bye -bye. Like, oh shit. <laughs> oh, bye -bye. We just blew our engine. Dude, that's balls. I know. Isn't that cool? Dude. Like. I think he ran out of propane. <laughs> Probably. That makes sense. Um, ice court on Mario Kart. So, you know how we end things here. You know how we do things. Oh, yeah, we sure do. <sighs> Where's our yeah. bang? We end things on bangs. Nice. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> the smoke out the nose. Like, John Legend. <laughs> he, he looks like John Legend thing. with the beard on his on his left side now. <laughs> a char, right? right? He a John Legend beard. <laughs> do, 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 do. He didn't but, have a mask. Yep. Oh no. Oh, that's. That's not Let's how you're go. supposed to light a roach. Yeah, it tastes like shit too, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, that lad. Did he that? swallow it? Did it go like, right down his he... throat? No, he just he put it in out. his mouth. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I used to put out roaches on my tongue that way. Proud of you. Thank you. That's the only way to do it. Oh! Is that nitrous? <clears throat> no. Oh! Potassium. Uh huh. Oh. In water. That's a bang. It's time to end with a real yes, bang. Yes, it is. Now here it comes. So is this. It is FPS Russia, where safety is number one priority. It is the um... sea hive. Probably the best the site in the hive. world. Look, it's probably the best site. Like, he got in, in trouble. World. He's like in prison. Is he really? I think. He might have gotten out. Yeah, there's some fucking crazy like tax evasion or I don't know who some this weird is. weirdness. I've I don't remember. But guy. it's a nice big explosion. Early YouTube guy. Going. Oh my. <laughs> Maybe a lot of shrapnel. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that door came real close to taking his ass out. I know, like, real close to just cutting him in half. Yeah. Oh my god. Like, okay. Oh, maybe maybe a, little, a lot of shrapnel. Maybe a lot of shrapnel. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a lot. Oh. I know, right? Wow. Oh. All right. All oh. righty. Boats. That was that was boats, everybody, and that was that was another happy episode of how did we miss that? Right at two and a half. Um stay tuned this week. We got a big week. Um so I don't know if it's Monday yep. night, Tuesday night, sometime we'll put up the stream. But Tara has an interview with a young woman who's on Baina. the on the Myrovitz kill list. And Talk yep. about what that's like, and she lives in your in Donetsk, uh, Faina. And then, uh, it's Tuesday, be Tim Pacific Tuesday, Tuesday we, got, I think. we got Care Bears show 
Is it 10 p.m. Pacific? Okay. Um, I think. Tuesday, we got Care Bears, Care Bears special episode of INN News. Wednesday, we've got INN News regular. It's regular night and time, Wednesday night, 9 o'clock. And stay tuned for some other stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm working on a little something. I got a logo. I got some scripts written. I need to organize some stuff, but there's there's something special and new coming out of me. Um, and it's not going to be politics related, believe it or like not. Like a little alien? Hello, my darling. Hello, my baby. Hello, my ragtime gal. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah. And yeah, so we'll be up, you know, you'll be, you can download the podcast. Go to anchor.fm slash independent left news. You got to spell that all the way out. Um, I'll get that up there this week. If Phantom S. Fanto resurfaces, he's taking a week off. Shout out. Thank you so much for all your work, Fanto. If he resurfaces this week, hopefully we'll get some clips done. If not, I'll have to do it myself. And I can do that if I need to. Um, we had an awesome American tradition yeah. last week with Jesse Jett. And he did a mm-hmm. listening party for. Uh, for his re-release of the coming spring, and um, that was great. So definitely check that out. I just created actually a new playlist for all the full episodes of American Tradition because we only had a Jesse Jet playlist, and there were clips and full episodes and everything. So now just the eleven episodes, or actually, there's fifteen episodes in total. One of them I realized yesterday never made it on to INN's channel because we were censored for a week and we only went live on my channel that week, mm. Labor Day week. And I have the gotcha. video file uploaded and it's all ready and queued up. And maybe one day this week, maybe even Thursday night, I'll run that as a premiere and we can have that run live on INN for the first time. And then add it to the library with all the other episodes. But um, <clears throat> For tonight, and I appreciate everybody hanging out. This was a lot of fun. Appreciate you going through these stories. Support workers, support Amazon workers, support pilots. Shout out to ORF, free ORF, fuck censorship, and uh, always question everyone's motivations, everybody. What about you? If you fall asleep? People listen to what little birds have to tell you. Good night, fam. <laughs> I think I liked it better being blind When I couldn't read between the lines And when I couldn't see the cracks in the structure That lay bare before me the whole time I think I liked it better back when I Suspended disbelief and swallowed pride I thought I knew the difference in the red from the blue But they both bleed us so dry They both bleed us so dry My favorite songs don't hit the same way I get to the end of a four minute track And I'm only looking back thinking What did they actually say? 